that sits prominently in the landscape. For the 8-3 Carolina Panthers, they have to overcome the Lambeau Field mystique and find a way to win as they want to keep pace in the NFC South. The 5-6 Green Bay Packers can't afford another loss. A loss would mean they'd be two games out in the NFC North at the end of play tonight. It's the Green Bay Packers and the Carolina Panthers on the NFL on Fox. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the NFL on Fox. I'm Sam Rosen, along with Tim Ryan and Chris Myers. And a win today is vital for these two teams in their race for the playoffs. How do you see the matchup? Well, Tim? this is a huge game in terms of the playoff picture, Sam. No question. I'll tell you how I see the matchup. I think it's going to be really old-fashioned football that should feature the ground games of both teams when you look at the weather. For the Green Bay Packers, the offensive line has started to play well, and you've seen the running back, Ryan Grant, take off. He's found his groove. Last two home games, up over 100 yards in each game his success to me today is key and it will also take a lot of pressure off the young quarterback Aaron Rodgers Sam he has had really really good numbers here at home but not in these conditions so I'm very interested to see how he does in the cold weather the wind is really supposed to start to blow later for Carolina also about leaning on the run game they've had terrific production out of their running back tandem and D'Angelo Williams and Jonathan Stewart D'Angelo's got four straight games that open over 100 yards uh, in each one of those games Jake DeLome told us last night a big big key in this game for Carolina is to start fast it was a problem last week uh, frankly Sam it's been a problem for them all year now it's time for our yellow book future faces yellow book and yellowbook.com say yellow to the future for the Carolina Panthers it's their starting safety Charles Godfrey for the Green Bay Packers their rookie defensive end Jeremy Thompson to learn more about this week's yellow book future faces go to foxsports.com slash future faces it is a cold football day here in Green Bay cloud cover temperatures in the 30s and snow is coming when we come back Chris Myers will show us how to heat up the frozen tundra at Lambeau Field. Well, I know this looks like a, a place where Willy Wonka would work, but at Lambeau, it's a process. This piping, 35 miles of it, about 12 to 14 inches beneath the surface of Lambeau Field, keeps the field warm. They pump in environmentally safe antifreeze to keep the temperature at 38 degrees. Too hot, it gets mushy, not hot enough. The field is frozen, and these operate all the different pumping stations out to the field. Mike, keeping an eye on things. Everything's great. All right, and so far, so good. So the frozen tundra, not so frozen. Also, it's a good place to keep your bagels warm. Sam? <laughs> <laughs> Sesame bagel with Nova and uh, chive cream cheese. Did you get your bagel this morning? I did. All right. You have to on Sunday. Very important on game day for you. The I Carolina know. Panthers have won the coin toss, elected to receive. Mason Crosby is teeing it up. These two teams played here last season. The Packers won 31 17. And here we go. Short kick. Mark Jones comes up, takes it at the 12. Couple of blockers tripped up, falls forward to about the 30-yard line. Jared Bush made the tackle, and Jake DeLome, after elbow surgery in the offseason, throwing the ball well, says his arm feels better than ever, and passed for 295 yards, a season high against Atlanta last week in a losing cause. The Packers' defense was gashed Monday night. By New Orleans, D'Angelo Williams and Brad Hoover in the backfield. D'Angelo Williams, as Tim said, four straight 100-yard rushing games. And here he is, tosses it back for the flea flicker by DeLome. He's got Moussin Mohammed, and he is down, lost the ball. It's a fumble, and it's recovered by the Packers. What a start. They hit the flea flicker, but Moussin Mohammed Tackled by Charles Woodson, fumble the ball. And we have got tempers heating up. Charles Woodson recovered the fumble. Yeah, I think Tremont Williams is the guy that knocked it out. Here's the flea flicker. You got two tight ends out on the field, actually two backs, so they end up unloading it. Think and run is Green Bay. Musa Muhammad gets behind Tremont Williams. The ball is underthrown. So Moose has to wait on it. Now he's turning around. Is this ball out? Yeah, that ball oh, yeah. is out. That ball is out. Terrific job by Tremont Williams, who's getting the start on defense today because they have installed Charles Woodson at strong safety so they can get their four best defenders on the football field. Woodson came up with the recovery. They've had a lot of injuries at safety. 
And Woodson with a recovery. And now the Packers from the 18 and the toss to Ryan Grant. And their leading rusher busts his way up to the 23-yard line. The tackle made by the cornerback, Ken Lucas. As you look at the Packers starting lineup, Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball well. Ryan Grant having a good season running the ball. The fullback is Corey Hall. We'll see John Kuhn as well. Greg Jennings, the key wide receiver. Offensive line, Mark Tauscher, bothered by a hamstring, starts the game. Did not practice much. Two tight ends in. Rolling is Rodgers. He's got a man open. It's driver a little too long. Boy, Rodgers got a lot on that throw while he was rolling to the right. Take a look at Carolina on defense. The defense is led by Julius Peppers. Great bounce back season. Has nine sacks in the last nine games. Niall Diggs, the former Packer, a key man. John Beast in the middle linebacker. Thomas Davis, a hard hitting linebacker on the outside. Chris Gamble just signed a new six year extension. And worth it. He's had an exceptional season out of corner. And a shot of Musa Muhammad on the bench. Talking about the fumble. Four wide receivers, empty backfield on third down. Rodgers gets time and throws too high for Jordy Nelson. So the Packers, after the turnover, unable to move the football at all. I think what you saw on Aaron Rodgers, out of Aaron Rodgers on that second down, is something we're going to see a lot of in this game, with him rolling out and getting outside of the pocket. He throws so good off the run, told us on Friday that he'd prefer really to do more of it. So really, I think look for Julius Peppers today on defense, roll away from him, get Aaron Rodgers out of the pocket, surveying the football field. Derek crossed the punt. He did not have a good game last week. Low kick, bounces down. The fans get on Frost right away. Mark Jones on the return up to the 48-yard line. And the fans get on Derek Frost. Carolina gets the ball in good field position here in Green Bay. Back at Lambeau Field, how about the switch here with the Tremont Williams starting at quarterback, Charles Woods moving from quarterback to strong safety. Yeah, you don't lose a whole bunch. As a matter of fact, and they've been really beat up at safety with those four guys out there and getting Tremont Williams on the field, you're certainly more prepared to defend the pass. They got their four best pass defenders out there in the secondary. Carolina goes with two tight ends. D'Angelo Williams cutting it back, slowed down. Slipped two tackles and fights his way for a one-yard gain. That was a lot of work for a one-yard gain. Brady Papinga and A.J. Hawk on the tackle. Offensively, Jake DeLome is the leader. The running game is led by D'Angelo Williams, closing in on 1,000 yards. Steve Smith is the number one receiver. Jeff King, the tight end, followed by Dante Rosario. No huddle for Carolina. The shotgun, DeLome with time, completes it to Moussin Mohammed out of bounds at the Packers 44. We'll talk about Moussin in a moment after that 45 yard pass that he wound up fumbling. But the Packers on defense starting Mike Montgomery with Jeremy Thompson bothered by an injury. The linebackers, A.J. Hawk has moved to the middle. This is his third game starting at middle linebacker. The secondary we talked about. Brown really getting loud. And DeLone just gets it off. Has time and lobs it incomplete. Intended for Musin Mohammed. So the putting unit will come on for Carolina. Boy, the more DeLome walked up and down the line, the louder the crowd got. Well, and there'll be a factor in this game today, and Jake has struggled on the road. You got man coverage here, and watch Moosin Muhammad right here get off of Al Harris. Does not let Al Harris get his hand on him with a little arm over move. That's how you really equalize Al Harris. If Al Harris can get his hands on you, you're really dead in the water in terms of being able to get off and get open. So good work there by Moosin Muhammad. Getting open, Jake just couldn't find him. Jason Baker gets time. Punts it away. Will Blackman lets it go. It bounces and stays in play. A favorable bounce 
for the Carolina Panthers as they down it at the three-yard line. 41-yard punt. Oh, man, that's good. It's drinkability. Fox is sponsored by Bud Light. The difference is drinkability. Aaron Rodgers telling me in pregame warm-ups this is the coldest football game he'll ever start. He said you have to loosen your grip when the ball is this cold, and it affects a little bit of your velocity. He said because he has big hands, though, he can grip the ball well, and he's never played a football game in snow. Sam? Well, we expect some snow later. Thank you, Chris. Packers start from the three. Corey Hall, the fullback. Ryan Grant takes it outside. And John Beeson, the middle linebacker, chased him down, combined with Ken Lucas to take down Ryan Grant. Beeson's really playing well. You know, since he's locked in at Mike linebacker, and it started last year when Dan Morgan had an injury, John Beeson, first-round pick, was a weak side linebacker, really all of his time at Miami, stepped in at Mike. Hundred and Mike being right in the middle for Dan Morgan. 160 tackles last year. He's already now got 116 through 11 plus games this year. Two tight ends, two backs in for Green Bay. Jennings the long wide receiver. It's Ryan Grant again. Short yardage up to the seven yard line. Well, let's check out the Division, the conference leading Giants and the Redskins. Here's Kurt Benefit. Well, everyone knows that Plexico Burris is out after shooting himself in the leg. First series of the game against the Redskins. Amani Toomer, the other wide receiver, takes it from 40 yards out from Eli Manning. And the Giants strike quickly up 7-0 on their first possession of the ball game. Back to Sam and Tim. Thanks, Kurt. I think Tom Coughlin does a great job getting his team ready and avoiding the distraction. They already know they can win without Flash. They've proven that this year. Brandon Jackson in the backfield for the Packers on third down. They have to get to the 13. Rodgers gets time. Passes too high. Timmy's thrown three passes, and all three have been high. Is he a little slippery? Well, sometimes I think it's just mechanics. I mean, maybe the ball is slippery, but a lot of times you're just not rotating with the lower body when that ball sails out high. You know, other ways of looking at it, he's getting excited, and it's coming out early, and it's and it's and it's rising up on him. But I'll tell you what, it's a good thing that one rose up on him. That was an ill-advised throw to about four defenders, and if that didn't rise up on him, I bet you it would have been picked. Mark Jones standing at midfield waiting for Derek Frost's second punt. Frost eight yards deep in the end zone. This is a good kick. Jones backs up, takes it at the 45. Room to return. And he is upended down at the Packers 42 yard line. Once again, the field position getting better and better for Carolina. Okay, so the answer of the NFL and the best day of the week by the all-new 09 F-150. It's not just a new truck, it's a new F-150. And by Wanted, one of the most trailblazing action films ever on DVD and Blu-ray High Def Tuesday. Sam, I think three things we really need to keep our eyes on early. The first quarter start for Carolina. Pretty good so far with the big flea flicker. The run defense for Green Bay. They've certainly struggled this year. And then the injuries. Tauscher against Julius Peppers. And how do they hold up back in the safety position where the, uh, really all their guys are nicked up? Malone to D'Angelo Williams. To get outside. Fights his way down to the 35. He picks up seven yards on first down. You're right about the, the bad starts. Carolina has scored only 27 first quarter points this season. That's the second fewest in the NFL. Only Oakland has scored fewer. And you know what? A lot, a lot of it has been self-destruction. Um, you know, they've had pre-snap penalties. That's Moose and Muhammad. Uh -oh. Got Holding injured there right blocking. Arm. He was blocking Charles Woodson. He's an outstanding blocker on running plays. Well, watch him right here on Charles Woodson. And this one pops right in front of him. And it looks like as D'Angelo Williams cut up inside, he just ran right into the back of the arm of Moussa Muhammad as he was engaged with Charles Woodson. Ford and Lincoln Mercury announce Employee Pricing Plus. Oh, Moussa Muhammad walking off and not flexing too much, and then Jake DeLone laughing at him. So everything's That's cool. That's a good sign. Now, three tight ends in. King, Rosario, and Barnage, the rookie, Steve Smith, the wide receiver out to the left. The Loma on second and three. He goes deep over the middle and complete off the hands of Jeff King, the tight end, the starting tight end, the number one man. 
Nick Collins covering on the play. Well, Jeff King is going to be right here. He gets behind the linebacker, Brady Papinga, and just really up in front of the safeties in Woodson and Nick Collins. See him take off there, get behind A.J. Hawk, and the ball just a little high as he lays out and goes off his fingertip. Jeremy Thompson in at defensive end for the Packers. D.J. Hackett in at wide receiver, and Moussin Muhammad back on the field. Three wide receivers for Carolina on third and three. Malone outside of D'Angelo Williams at first down. A.J. Hawk takes him down, but that's something that Carolina wanted to get into a little more, throwing to the backs out of the backfield. Well, and this is an area where I think they really need to start getting going and improve on and getting the running backs to the football. You always ask yourself, okay, Steve Smith, Moose, and Muhammad, who else is a big factor in the passing game? John Fox will tell you his tight ends have done a little bit, but the running backs need to do more. And they just ran a little leverage route, a little choice route. D'Angelo Williams on the linebacker, ran to the outside, and Jake hooked up for the first down. They're short of the 30-yard line. There are two tight ends in. The toss to D'Angelo Williams behind Brad Hoover. He gets outside. Down the sideline. He is inside the five-yard line. Nick Collins knocked him out. Big run for D'Angelo Williams. 27 yards. This is the outside power, and they love it. They're going to pull Jordan Gross. They'll pull the center, Ryan Khalil. Gross gets the kick out, but watch the block by 45, Brad Hoover. Watch this. Watch this on A.J. Hawk. Wow. And that's a pancake. He puts A.J. Hawk on his back, and D'Angelo Williams takes it down inside the five-yard line. Watch this. Oh. Executed perfectly. And that's their favorite play. They love the outside power. And Nick Collins is down. That's another defensive back hurting for the Green Bay Packers. They're already short with Atari Bigby hurting. Aaron Rouse is inactive and Charlie Pepper is hurting. Well, we just talked about it, keeping the early eyes on. How do those safeties hold up in this football game? And Nick Collins had a knee, I know, coming into the game and has played very, very well. Bigby, you said it. He's got an ankle. They've had to start Charles Woodson out there at strong safety today, so he can't get back in. And Pepper's got a calf. I mean, yep. this will stress the back end of their defense out. Chris Myers, what do you have on the medical situation? We'll update the Packers in a moment on the Panthers sideline. The reason that Delon was smiling is Musa Muhammad just jammed his hand. They wrapped it, taped it. He's been back in and applying blocks. But over behind the bench, return specialist Mark Jones, his right knee injured. The medical staff checking that. That could be a serious concern. Thanks, Chris. Two tight ends in for the Panthers. D'Angelo Williams in the backfield. Mohammed in motion, first and goal from the three. Williams, straight ahead, powering, pushing to the goal line. No signal yet. Now we get a signal on the near side of a touchdown. The head linesman signal touchdown. The official from the far side said short, that he was down short of the goal line. Let's hear if we can hear it. Well, you probably won't be able to hear a whistle here. A forward progress was stopped. The ruling down. Ooh, Ooh that's. Boy. I think he. Would, I think it was in. Atari Bigby wrapped him up. Boy, it sure looks like it's in. They ruled it inches short. Second and goal with two tight ends in. Now Moussin Mohammed motions. D'Angelo Williams, he's in, touchdown. Now it's official. And a rushing touchdown in five consecutive games for D'Angelo Williams. And a concern, as you mentioned, Tim, was the rushing defense of the Packers. That time the Panthers ran the ball very well. Well, it was that outside power that was the big one. And the, the play right before that one looked like a touchdown to me. Again, that time just off tackle and got good blocking by the wide receivers set D'Angelo Williams up one on one with Charles Woodson and he just carried him into the end zone. John Casey's extra point is right through the Carolina Panthers haven't scored a lot of points in the first quarter this season but they come through here on the touchdown by D'Angelo Williams. Well Jake DeLome told us yesterday Sam they needed a fast start look at this the last three weeks 50 yards and 10 minutes that's cumulative in of offense in the first quarter 
with the last three weeks. Today, 93 yards and four minutes of time of possession. Jeff Davidson there, the offensive coordinator on the right, is loving it. Reese Lloyd on the kickoff. On the return, it's Will Blackman from the five. And a leapfrog over and goes down at the 23-yard line. And we go down to the field to Chris Myers. Sam, just updating Nick Collins. He has a hip injury. He will return in that secondary. But as you and Tim pointed out, Rouse is out. Lionel Washington who works with Kurt Schottenheimer, the secondary, said because of their injuries and limitations there, it will affect the coverages they have planned for Steve Smith. Back up to you. Thanks, Chris. Packers have been three and out on their first two possessions of the game. Three wide receivers. Jordy Nelson in as the third wide receiver. With Driver and Jennings. The play fake. Rogers going for John Kuhn, the fullback. And that pass is dropped. Thus far, Rogers 0 for 4, unable to get anything going. Well, in that time there, I mean, you see him, he draws back, looks down the field, and, and Carolina was just in a cover, too. They had shell coverage. They had everything covered up in that umbrella coverage back there. Nowhere to go with the ball and tries to hit the kick down. Check down to John Kuhn. I like a check down, but I like the check down when the quarterback's in rhythm. Uh, clearly, he wasn't in rhythm there and tried to get it down to him late. On second down, driver motion. Roger short drop, pump fake, goes short, and completes it to the tight end Donald Lee up to the 30-yard line. It'll bring up a third and three, first completion of the game for Aaron Rodgers on his fifth pass. What a great sight here at Lambeau Field. Packed house, fans just cheering on their Packers no matter what the record. Right now at five and six, this is a critical game for them because Minnesota and Chicago at six and five play tonight. Four wide receivers for the Packers on third and three. Rodgers gets time, throws short over the middle of Greg Jennings. He's got a first down up at the 34-yard line. Greg Jennings with a catch in 39 consecutive games now. Well, and he's the go-to guy. I think you look at this offense, and the guy is really a big play waiting to happen. Has more explosive plays, as you see here, with 20-plus and 40-plus in the league than anybody in the league. 17.3 yards per reception is terrific, and he leads him in catches, Sam, coming into this game today. Closing in on a 1,000-yard season. Motions. Ryan Grant gets outside. Chris Gamble with a hit. Flag on the play. I think they're going to get holding. Maybe on Donald Driver. Somebody out on the holding. Edge. Holding. Offense. Number 80. 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. I like when you help out Gene Sterritt. You like it? There he is here, number 80, and he's going to be trying to block Chris Harris. He just reaches Ooh. out with his left arm and just see how he contorted and changed the posture of his upper body. Just real easy for the side judge to see there. Gene Sterritt is our referee. Donald Driver called for the hold, and the Packers set back to the 24-yard line. First and 20. He was fun to talk to the other day, Aaron Rodgers, on Friday. Spent a time with him. Real, real impressive. Young guy. Got a great future ahead of him. He's handled the changeover from the far there to Rodgers very well. Strong run as he gets back to the... 35-yard line, 11-yard pickup. Couple good blocks. He's got to have a key block. Spitz has a good block right here on the linebacker, and they run right at the bubble of the defense. You see a little bump block where they get enough on the defensive tackle, Damian Lewis, to get him sealed up, and then Spitz is able to get to the next level on the linebacker. That's the thing that they've been doing well over the last two or three games is getting those offensive guards to the second level of the defense, meaning the linebackers. Three wide receivers, two backs for the Packers. On second and nine, Rodgers pressure, drops it off to the fullback, Corey Hall. And he dives forward to the 37. Let's check out San Francisco at Buffalo. Here's Kurt Menefin. Sam, don't write off the old man just yet. John Hill to Isaac Bruce. He's been good the last couple of weeks. Scores for the 49ers and gives them a quick lead in Buffalo. 7-0. Sam, Tim, and Chris. Don't write off the old man. I won't do that, I promise, Kurt. I'm all for him. 
Arizona up top San Francisco just trying to salvage well, something of their season. Listen if they lose today I think Arizona will win that division. That's right now. Clinch it. Yep. Brandon Jackson in the backfield on third and seven. Rodgers gets time. Now he runs to the right side looking. Pulled it down goes out of bounds at the 40 short of the first down. John Beeson chased him out. Nobody opened downfield for Aaron Rodgers and the Packers forced to punt for the third straight time. Well, and they had eight guys in coverage, and that's one area when you look at Carolina, they've been very good on third down this year. They're a top five team, and that will be a challenge because Green Bay has been pretty efficient. I think they're a number 11 in the league and on the money down, uh, so they've been good, but big challenge today against that defense. Simply rushed three, got enough pressure, dropped eight, nowhere for Aaron Rodgers to go with the football. Eric Frost set the kick away to Mark Jones off the side of his foot. Good bounce. Jones on a good return. And Carolina starts from the 30-yard line. Fans don't like the punting of Derek Frost. Fans are good, but if you're not performing, they'll get on you. And we'll be talking about the concern of these DBs throughout the day today. And it was a big problem. It started Monday night in New Orleans. You see here they caught him on a corner blitz, then missed tackles. Nick Collins on this one loses a shoe, then loses track of Lance Moore. A.J. Hawk, breakdown in communication. He's not sure he had the tight end. And then you'll see here Charles Woodson, a little double move. The play breaks down, and Marcus Colston takes it 70 yards. So uncharacteristically, uh, this secondary did not play good last Monday night. And these are the four big ones today as Charles Woodson you see there in the top left box is starting at strong safety so they can have their four best pass defenders on the field. Nick Collins back in DeLome on first down. He got it in there in a tight situation with good coverage. He got it into D'Angelo De Williams with A.J. Hawk all over him, but he went to Williams and a good catch. And we're going to see a lot of, of D'Angelo Williams, I think, against A.J. Hawk. And, and here's the defensive concerns this year. Six sacks in the last five games. That has to improve. They have gotten better at stopping the run. Last three or four games, they've played well. They're missing Colin Jenkins and Nick Barnett. And then the big plays. You see what has happened to this defense this year with touchdowns over the top. Williams on second and seven. Boy, he's becoming an everything back for the Carolina Panthers. Running the ball well, running inside, getting outside, and now catching the ball out of the backfield. He is so valuable for them. And watch this matchup inside. These D tackles have to play well today. Travell Wharton kicks around and leads up inside. They're able to get enough push right there on the double team on Ryan Pickett to wall him off. You see Travell Wharton getting the hole. And then Hoover again getting a good block. I mean, this power run game, it's all power, Sam, for the Carolina Panthers. They get after it. Third and two and a half. Steve Smith splits wide out. Three wide receivers in. Malone gets time. Nobody open. In trouble now. And Campman's got him. Jeff Ota was beaten by Campman. For the sack. Here's the coverage down the field. Al Harris again. Musin Muhammad. You're going to see a little bit of a in route right there. They have him doubled up. And then here's the crossers on the inside. That's a good job of getting physical with those guys and really knocking them off their route. And Jake DeLome has nowhere to go with the ball. And Aaron Campman comes from around the backside, keeps his motor cranked up, and gets his eighth and a half sack on the season. 19 for the Packers. Jason Baker's punt. Will Blackman from the 21. He's dangerous. Oh! He tried to hurdle one defender, but he was tripped up on the play by Nate Sally. And we go to the field where Chris Myers has a report. Chris. Jake DeLone frustrated after that last series, but playing against the guy who really launched his NFL career eight years ago. They were both in New Orleans. Mike McCarthy is the quarterback coach. And of course, DeLone was just a quarterback on the roster and said that McCarthy was tough on him in a good way. Taught him how to be a professional. McCarthy told me in pregame warmups, DeLone always had the passion. He wasn't afraid to ask tough questions. And Jake DeLone playing his first regular season game here at Lambeau. Field. Thanks, Chris. Packers start from the 35. Their fourth possession. They funded three times off the play fake. Rogers in trouble. Gets away and throws and completes it to Greg Jennings in Panther territory at the 48-yard line. Nice comeback by Jennings. 
with well, Rodgers in trouble. You're really in trouble because watch the bull rush and that means just taking this offensive tackle right down the middle. He's going to push Tauscher right to the lap of the quarterback. Charles Johnson is going to reach out with his hand try to swat the ball. Tauscher held on to him. Aaron Rodgers able to get away keeping his eyes down the field and throwing a strike on the out route to Greg Jennings. Two tight ends for the Packers. Torrey Humphrey and Donald Lee. And the Panther 48. Grant looking for an opening gets a short pickup of about a yard and a half Tyler Brayton the defensive end made the stop Ryan Grant who has been a solid running back picked it up in the second half of last season became the number one back and after a slow start this year he's starting to come on last strong. year the running game was a slow start I think the O line this year again starting to pick it up here late if last year as you said was an indicator the time for Ryan Grant is now to really start cranking out the yards on second and eight toss to Grant weaves his way inside the 45 down to the 43 yard line John Beeson the middle linebacker making the stop for Carolina. There's John Beeson, who has done an outstanding job as the middle linebacker. Their linebackers are solid. Niall Diggs, the former backer, and Thomas Davis. They have a good, solid three linebacker. Well, and everybody talks about Beeson. They have a lot of Carolina Panther players around the league. I think just because they're in Carolina are underrated. Thomas Davis is also, you said it, very good. Three wide receivers. James Jones in as the third wide receiver. Number 89 motions. Brandon Jackson, the running back. Pass to Jones. First down at the Carolina 34. Charles Johnson dropped back in zone coverage and made the tackle. The second year man out of San Jose State, James Jones on the reception. Yeah, and you're going to see Charles Johnson. He's right here. He drops back into coverage and James Jones coming in motion just gets inside of him. The blitz coming from over here. Aaron Rodgers gets good time and finds the mismatch. That's the one he wanted. His wideout, his third wideout on a defensive end in coverage. And Grant alone set back out of the shotgun with three wide receivers. Everybody split off. And he goes short to Greg Jennings. He's hit as he crosses the 30. They give him forward progress to the 29-yard line. Charles Godfrey, the rookie free safety, made the stop. Rogers started to get that, find that rhythm. As time winds down. In this first quarter, he missed his first four. He's hit his last six. Carolina Panthers with only their fourth first quarter touchdown of the season. They lead 7-0 into the first. It's a football day in Green Bay. Sam Rosen, Tim Ryan, Chris Myers with you. Packers second and five at the Carolina 29 to start the second quarter. Off the play fake, Rodgers wanted to go deep, go short instead to the fullback, Corey Hall. It gets down to the 22, but that's enough for the first down. John Beeson took a hard hit. That's a big collision. Corey Hall is six feet, 243. And he's as big as Beeson, maybe well, even a little bigger. And was a linebacker like Beeson. Corey Hall, I think, was an all-conference linebacker coming out of Boise State. He's made a nice transition to fullback here with the Packers. Good drive for the Packers, which started at their own 35. Now from the 22. Rodgers looking, by some time, and throws it away. He's outside the pocket. Nobody open. Uh, you talk about Boise State, so it makes you think about BCS standings. And on our post-game show, presented by AT&T, we will unveil the exclusive BCS standing. Who will go to the Big 12 championship game? Oklahoma, Texas, to face Missouri? Hmm. Put USC in there. It's about Big 12. What the <laughs> heck? Why not? I could use another W. <laughs> Full house backfield. Two fullbacks back there. Kuhn and Hall with... Ryan Grant. Toss to Grant. Almost dropped it. And that really, that little juggle 
denied the play any uh, chance of developing. And anytime you see this, it really is just true power eye with two fullbacks. You're going to see Chris Harris come from this side. And he's going to pop into your screen. They will insert a safety. You see Godfrey pull back. Harris is going to come in. He's going to force it back inside. Good job there by Tyler Brayton, too. He and, he and Chris Harris both forcing it inside so the linebacker Ross could run a hit and clean it up. Third and 11. A loss of a yard on the last play. Brandon Jackson in the backfield. Three wide receivers. James Jones, the third wide out. And everybody out. Rodgers gets time. Throws short. Got to leave a tight end inside the 15, but short of the first down. Marshall. Richard Marshall with the tackle. Yeah, you got to kick. Mike it. McCarthy, after thinking briefly, sends on the field goal kicking unit. The 65,000 coaches in the stands, I think, wanted to see him go for it. <laughs> Mason Crosby will attempt the right, field goal. He is 19 for 23 this season. Derek Frost, the holder. Brett Good is the long snapper. And the 32-yarder is good. So the Packers get some life offensively in their fourth possession. They start from their 35. They stall, but get the field goal from Crosby. I play golf. Eventually, I'd like to beat Tony Romo at the Lake Tahoe Tournament. That's a goal of mine. I like to play the guitar. <laughs> Pretty much John Mayer got me into that. I mean, he gets a lot of hot chicks. Pretty impressive. So I said, I need to play guitar a little bit. No, that's not serious. That is a good story, though. <laughs> hey, why not? You like to play the guitar, don't you? With these fingers? <laughs> not a lot of dexterity, Sam. Crosby kicks it off. Mark Jones from the three. Gets through. He's got a good opening. Jones, an outstanding return, is shoved out of bounds. Across the 45-yard line, right at the 45 is where they spot it. That's a fine return, 42 yards by Mark Jones. He's brought a nice little boost to the return game here in Carolina since they've got him. So he's going to get up behind, really, just a two-man wedge and just splits his two blockers in Barnage and Jeff Hangartner, runs right by the kicker, and then Jeremy Thompson able to push him out of bounds. Panthers have had excellent field position in this game. They have started from their 30, 49, the Green Bay 42, their 30, and now the 45. With three wide receivers, everybody out. Swing it out to Jonathan Stewart. And the rookie running back with his first touch of the game is shoved out of bounds at the 47-yard line by Brandon Chiller. We go to a guy who's not chilly, Chris Myers. <laughs> it's getting colder down here. Jim Skipper, running back coach, assistant head coach, helping out with the combination from D'Angelo Williams to Jonathan Stewart. It began with Stephen Davis, who handed off to Deshaun Foster. He makes the previous guy make sure the other guy knows what he's doing and bring him along. And he said the two-back running back system works in Carolina. They trust each other. They believe in each other. It's an unselfish system that has worked for John Fox. You're right about that. And he did. Jim Skipper does a great job, as you mentioned. Jonathan Stewart on that last carry down to the Green Bay 45-yard line, a little short. Watch the surge by the center Ryan Khalil and the left guard Travell Ward. Remember I told you the D-tackles have to play well in this game. Well, they just took that D-tackle, I believe it was Johnny Jolly, or Justin Harrell, excuse me, about five yards off the ball, got him into the linebacker, and they get several yards on the play. Jonathan Stewart is a load, Sam. He goes about 240 pounds. Third and half a yard. Stewart looking for that half yard. He breaks through. He is going all the way to the eighth fumble the ball. And the pileup. It is recovered by the Panthers. Jonathan Stewart was caught from behind as he was lunging toward the end zone and coughed it up. Don't tell me that's Tremont, that's uh, Jeff Otaw, the big fellow that ran down there and got the fumble recovery. Let's see. There's a big man on the bottom of the pile. Do you believe it? Travell Wharton. Travell I know it's Wharton, I think. Somebody hustling down the field. That's what happens when you run to the ball, and you would think 
Jonathan Stewart was going here. He's looking for a half a yard. He gets in the crease. Look at the block by Travol Wharton. Terrific. Now it's just all about the hustle. Charles Woodson slapping the ball out. Yeah, it's Travel Wharton who had an outstanding block to free up the runner and then runs all the way down the field and gets a huge fumble recovery. So the big run by Stewart sets up this. D'Angelo Williams getting to the one yard line. All right, let's watch this left guard, Travel Wharton. He's going to start right there and watch his kick out block. As he gets into the guard and then the defensive tackle and then kicks out A.J. Hawk, which is going to open the running lane right there. And now watch 70. He's following the play. You can see his feet just falls out of your screen there. Now he's going to get back into it and get the fumble recovery. It was a 43-yard run by Jonathan Stewart. The fumble recovered by the Panthers. His second and goal. Lucin Muhammad in motion. Blown throws for Stephen Smith. How about that? Gonna get and a flag on Tremont Williams. So that's going to make it a first and goal at the one. Well, and it's real simple. Is there contact while the ball's in the air? Ball's in the air, ball's in the air. Ooh, I don't know about that. Well, I'm not sure about that call. Steve, Steve Smith wanted it right away. Well, there's some contact yeah, there. 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 Yeah. The, the left hand is okay. on him and it's actually got an, a material effect on Steve Smith and his body posture. Well, he's... There are two fouls on the play. Pass interference defense number 38. Also number 38 personal foul face mask. Both of those penalties will be enforced half the distance to the goal. First down Carolina. So the ball is a half yard out first and goal. Checks things out. The head man, you had a look at Mike McCarthy, the head coach of the Packers, with Carolina knocking on the door. Jeff Hangartner, an interior lineman, eligible as a tight end for the right side. And DeLome run for it. Gets a block and goes in. Travell Wharton gave him a big block on the outside, and Jake DeLome takes it in for the touchdown. The Loam's second rushing touchdown of the season. Green Bay was thinking the same thing I was. Everybody thought the run was going to their left, to the right-hand side. Everybody converged up on it. Green jerseys. Jake takes it out the back door. There is a defender that looked like he was there to stop him, but gets a terrific block, does Jake DeLone from Travell Wharton. That springs him free. That was Michael Montgomery who got blocked by Wharton. The extra point by Casey is right through. Jake DeLome with a play fake. Watch the block by number 70. You'd think after Jake DeLome ran in the touchdown that on the Panther bench, he'd be getting the, the high five and the congratulations. But Sam and Tim, there were five or six players, defense, offense, they came running over to Travell Wharton. They said, hey, way to hustle for a big guy. Keep that drive alive. Put us in position to get the touchdown. And the big man had the big fumble recovery after the big block that sprung the big run. Right. They got the big fumble recovery and then the big block. Uh, on the touchdown there by Jake Long. He is so versatile. He's really, really been a good player. Travell Wharton for the Carolina Line Panthers. drive kick picked up by Will Blackman at the 10. Blackman gets outside. Crosses the 30. Richard Marshall chases him out of bounds at the 33-yard line. Carolina Panthers have a 14-3 lead, and they're doing it in all different manners. Rated T for Team. Tonight's tag team partners, Triple H and John Cena. The Big Show, Hornswoggle. I can't decide. Create the ultimate tag team in SmackDown vs. Raw. Introducing all new tag team gameplay with high impact moves and finishers. WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2009. Alone, you're great. Together, you're unstoppable. Whoa, we're good. Let me upgrade you to the best channels in HD, only on DirecTV.
Get the most TV for your money. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Introducing Braun Series 7, the world's first shaver with Pulsonic technology. Over 10,000 micro pulses per minute give you incredibly smooth skin. The Series 7, one of Braun's perfectly smooth gifts. Are you aware of an impending attack on the planet Earth? You should let me go. Hey, guys! This is our planet. No, it is not. The day the Earth stood still in theaters and IMAX, December 12th, rated PG-13. A mysterious crime. Just when you thought things couldn't get any weirder. That's the running back, Jonathan Stewart, who had the 43-yard run, but was caught from behind and fumbled. And the report from Chris Myers that he's cramping up, so he's on the bike trying to stay loose. Ryan Grant, Corey Hall in the backfield for the Packers. who start from the 34. Grant with a good hole, but Maaki Kimoyatu wrapped him up at the 38-yard line. Pick up a four. Excuse me, Damian Lewis, the man who wrapped him up. Well, Green Bay needs to run at this. If Carolina is going to sit in that two shell, which means they have two deep safeties, there's really only seven guys in the box. You got two running backs. You got a, you're, you've got an advantage of a man. You got to be able to run it. And it looked like a pretty decent hole there for Ryan Grant. Damian Lewis came off his block and just threw him to the ground. The rushing has heavily favored the Carolina Panthers in this football game. Packers have run for only 29 yards to this point. Four wide receivers in, empty backfield. Rodgers, quick release, and the catch made up at the 44-yard line, very close to the first down. That was Ravel Martin on the grab, his first catch of the game. He spotted it just across the 43. It'll be third and one, third and one from the 43. for the Packers. Remember how successful that, that set was for the Packers last year. And I think getting James Jones back healthy and getting him in the lineup today will help them with that spread attack, getting all those wide receivers out and running the empty set quick passing game. John Toon is the fullback. Ryan Grant on the carry with the cutback. He's got a first down across the 45-yard line before the Panthers shoved him back. Darwin Walker, number 93, in on the stop. Not enough for the first down for the Packers. Aaron Rodgers, 9 for 14, 65 yards. Brian Grant, 9 carries, 29 yards. Here's Grant cutting it back. Turns it into a nice gain on first down. Took four players to wrestle him down at about the 47 of Carolina. Good block here by the center, who they like a lot, Scott Wells. I mean, there is a huge size disadvantage as he's going against Make Kimoyatu right here, and he just pushes him up and allows his running back to make the read. And that's the read by the running back, and that's why Ryan Grant, I think, is so effective. He's a downhill runner, and he's going to read that defensive tackle. That defensive tackle gets upfield and pushed out like he did. He's going to stick his foot in the dirt and cut it right downhill. Ball spotted for Carolina 48 to toss to Grant. Not much there. Gained about a yard. It'll bring up a third and two. Julius Peppers again coming down from his right defensive end spot to make the tackle. Julius Peppers with a huge bounce back season for Carolina. A lot of people were down on him at the end of last season. He just had an off year with two and a half sacks. And even the players, his teammates say he just wasn't right. Well, he's right now and he's playing very well. There's no doubt. There's a defensive coordinator, Mike Turgovac, who is really, they, they moved Julius Peppers over to the right side, playing right end, and it's been huge in terms of his ability to get back to those big time plays out at right end this year. Everybody out on third and two, completion to Jordy Nelson. And he's got a first down at the Carolina 42 yard line. Well, talking about Julius Peppers, take a look. Playing the way he used to. This man is closing in on his fifth double digit sack season. 
Nine sacks in his last nine games. 44 tackles coming into play today and 19 quarterback pressures and five forced fumbles. And as I said, they've moved him around and that's been a big part of him getting back to those big plays. You know, the down year really started at the end of 2006 and he's back with a vengeance here in 08. Pressure on and Rogers hung in there and completes it to Donald Driver down at the 30 yard line. Rodgers took a huge hit and really fired that pass. Good play by the quarterback. Well, and a couple of good runs. What do they do? They do play action and watch the running backs right here step up. They get right behind them. And Donald Driver is so good at that. All those inside cuts. He's a guy in this offense that has always done the dirty work. Aaron Rodgers, good job delivering that football with velocity, knowing he was going to take a hit. First down at the 30, Driver with a catch in 107 consecutive games. Ryan Grant, short pickup on first down. Let's check out the Giants and the Redskins and go back to Kurt Benefey. Well, after a Giants defensive penalty negated an interception, very next play they run the reverse due to Redskins, and the rookie Devin Thomas gets his first NFL touchdown making it a 13-7 game. And by the way, Sam and Tim, Clinton Portis has left this game with a neck injury. His return right now is questions. Oh, boy, what a huge loss that would be for the Redskins. James Jones is in, ninth play of the drive, third wide receiver. Brandon Jackson in the backfield on second down. Here's Jackson. Nice little cutback, nice move, slipped a couple of tackles, tiptoes the sideline. And he went out of bounds at the five-yard line. What a run by Brandon Jackson of 23 yards. The second year back out of Nebraska. Boy, he showed some elusiveness there. Well, when you get to the outside, you got to have two real good blocks on the perimeter, and he gets it. He gets it from his tight end, and he gets it from his left tackle, who really sealed up the edge nice for him. First choice timeout. Longest run of the season for Brandon Jackson. Carolina calls timeout. The Packers threatening. Sam, here's the big run by Brandon Jackson. And watch the left tackle I have circled there in, in Chad Clifton. And then watch the, watch the tight end, Donald Lee, come down and chip and give him help. He's going to give right there on Peppers. That knocks Peppers inside. And then Donald Lee goes out and gets the linebacker. Those were the two big blocks that sprung it for Brandon Jackson. First and goal for the Packers, just inside the five-yard line. Watch Aaron Rodgers. He leads the team with four rushing touchdowns. Brandon Jackson stays in. In motion is driver. Rodgers rolls, fakes, being pressured by Thomas Davis, throws it away. Good pressure from the linebacker, Thomas Davis. On Aaron Rodgers, brings up second and goal for the Packers. Well, this is just, I mean, this is game plan. And watch Thomas Davis right here. He's really going to spy and put the pressure on Aaron Rodgers. Alert boot, alert boot, here it comes. Now he's going to get out. He's going to force the hand of Aaron Rodgers. Nowhere to go with the ball. Pretty good coverage, too, on the back end. Three backs in for Green Bay. The two fullbacks, Coon and Hall, in that power eye. Two wide receivers. The toss to Jackson. And a good job of penetrating by Beeson. And Jackson was slowed down and then stuffed at the five-yard line. That'll bring up a third and goal. Well, this is what a middle linebacker does. Watch Beeson. He's going to be right here. Watch him key and diagnose and get right in the hole. I mean, right there, you, you see Niall Diggs does all the dirty work. He does the run fit on the fullback. He forces that thing to get outside. And Beeson is right there sitting in the hole. Already six tackles in the first half of this football game. Three wide receivers in. Third and goal. The ball back at the six-yard line. Donald Lee shifts. Rodgers gets time and throws. Touchdown! Donald Driver! Good protection for Rodgers. Gave him time to find Driver. Driver with his fourth touchdown reception of the season. So the great.
Green Bay Packers with an outstanding drive of 66 yards have cut the Panthers lead and now Crosby for the extra point. It's 14 to 10, 12 play drive for the Packers. Well, this is nothing new for Donald Driver. He's going to be the left side of your screen. Aaron Rodgers is going to him the whole way. Watch the defender get back. And as soon as he creates that space by driving the defender into the end zone, he gets past the goal line and just turns around. I mean, he gets right to the goal line, spins it, runs a little hook route, a little curl right there. Aaron Rodgers gets him the ball before the defenders can converge on it, and he falls into the end zone. And that was something the pack needed badly. A good drive, solid drive, which they mixed it up too. They started to run the ball better on that drive. Oh, that's the key for them. They got You got to take pressure off Aaron Rodgers. You know, a good running game will always be a quarterback's best friend, especially Sam, a young quarterback. So the more they can take pressure off of Aaron Rodgers by running the ball, the more they'll force Carolina to insert that extra defender, that eighth defender, that safety into the box, which will put holes in the coverage on the back end to help open the pass game. And then quickness by Brandon Jackson helped getting him in there. Good run to set up the touchdown. Crosby's kick sends Mark Jones deep in the end zone. It's a touchback. <laughs> Sam, when you talk about Aaron Rodgers and playing behind Brett Favre for three years, I think there's some qualities that have started to come through. Remember, he got his shoulder hurt. Uh, and then he comes back out against Tampa. Next drive, laser pass like Brett Favre. Makes a big play. He'll start to fade back like Brett Favre, do those things. Uh, he jumps on his lineman like Brett always did. He'll pump fake you past the line of scrimmage. Throws his body around. Watch this. I mean, he's a tough guy. Ooh. Now, he's not Brett Favre, and there'll be a long way to go before he can ever even think about being Brett Favre. But his toughness factor certainly plays a role. And he's one of those defensive quarterbacks. His defense loves him because of his toughness. D'Angelo Williams is stopped short of the line of scrimmage, right at the line of scrimmage on first down. This is the worst starting field position for the Carolina Panthers in the game. This is their sixth possession. As you look at Aaron Rodgers and his numbers, that touchdown pass is 18th of the season and talking to him Friday I said what are you what are you most proud of how you play because I'm pretty much proud of just the way I've handled this whole circus I mean really uncharted territory the way it all went down in the offseason and I mean he's the guy's handled it with ultimate class he's a very humble guy uh, and he's played well I mean his numbers at home have been really really impressive missed his four first four passes to start the game is 12 for his last 14 this is a critical game we've been talking about it in this race in the NFC North Tonight, the Chicago Bears, 6-5, and five, they have the tiebreaker against Minnesota. They play tonight. The winner of that game will be 7-5. and five. If the Packers don't win, if they lose this game, they'll be two games out with four to play. Now, again, this game's huge for Green Bay. And, and when you look at how the wild card works, probably going to have to win their division to get into the playoffs. Galone puts it up deep for Steve Smith and overthrows him. Well covered on the play. Tremont Williams was there. And Charles Woodson there as well. Well, Tremont Williams, I mean, he's just going to get and play play really man to cut man coverage from a little bit of an off position. He's got help over the top, although Nick Collins and Charles Woodson both late getting there. They really like this guy, Tremont Williams. And really a, a neat story. Came in as an undrafted free agent, practice squad. Uh, you said it earlier, started four games earlier in the year when Al Harris yeah. was down. Mike McCarthy said this guy could line up play bump and run man coverage and start on any team in the National Football League. Third, That's saying something. Third and ten. Jason Hunter in at defensive end for the Packers. Swing it out to D'Angelo Williams. Slips one man and gets knocked out of bounds at the by Brandon Chiller at the 26 yard line. Well done by the Packers. Good defensive series. Steve Smith does not have a catch today, and here's what they're doing to him. You call it cloud coverage, and really it's just two-on-one. You roll the coverage his way. You get the corner up in his face, and we just saw it a minute ago when Tremont Williams ran with him, and then you have the safety over the top. And then Charles Woodson, who playing the other safety today, gets to the deep middle. That's exactly what they're doing with success today versus Steve Smith. Here's Will Blackman from the 29. The return of the Jason Baker punt and a hard hit. Niall Diggs was there along... 
with Dante Wesley and we go to the field where Chris Myers is standing by. Yeah Sam I talked to Steve Smith before the game he said he wasn't sure what kind of coverage uh, they, he was going to see from them but he said they are the kind of defense the Packers secondary where they get in your face they push you right he said I don't go for that I don't like getting tangled up in that but if they want to play physical I'll play physical with them but so far the Packers have had the upper hand in the matchup and I think one thing Chris and Sam you'll see him do a lot of today and we'll watch it next time they get on offense is they'll move him around and, and they'll get him at the Z position where he's off the ball and can go in motion to really try to evade some of that press coverage that the Packers are so good at Packers with some momentum bad snap Rodgers trying to pick it up it's still loose is it recovered by Carolina yes I believe the Panthers recovered that fumble yes they did and Charles Johnson is the guy that got it the defensive end Rodgers made a mistake he tried to pick the ball up Charles Johnson wound up falling on it well here it is the Scott Wells snap is just way over the head of Aaron Rodgers and you're right there's the breakdown just fall on the football he tries to scoop it and run with it he can't corral it now then there's Charles Johnson who's all over it and fortunate as he fell down the ball was sitting right in front of him. huge turnover Panthers first down at the Packers 17 yard line. D'Angelo Williams try to cut it back and gets down to the 15 Charles Woodson makes the stop. Well, and they've they've moved Charles Woodson back to corner now. Charlie Pepra is in the game at safety, and and Woodson that time that's what you call corner support. He's back at his normal cornerback position, and he's got to come up and force that thing back inside, and hopefully get on the tackle. He did both. Is that because of red zone coverage? You think, Tim? I think it is. I think when they get down in the red zone, I think they'll go back to what they've done more traditional, keeping Charles Woodson and Al Harris out on the corner. Two minute warning. Defense has given up 158 yards in the game. Well, it hasn't been good, in particular against the run, as you see the numbers right there. You always talk about this time of year running the ball well. It goes to the defense, too. you got to be able to stop it. On second and eight, DeLone gets time. Throw short to Jeff King, the tight end, and he's down to the six-yard line. He's got a first down. Nick Collins made the stop. It brings up a first and goal for the Panthers, trying to take advantage of the turnover Packers defense backed up because of the turnover they've got to come up with something big here crowd gets loud two tight ends for Carolina both to the right side King and Rosario D'Angelo Williams fighting his way down close to the one yard line Brady Papinga wrapped him up and on the far side Al Harris and Steve Smith had a wrestling match going on they had to be separated by the officials oh yeah he does not like the jam at all look at that <laughs> when you see that on Saturday night, that's, that's, a, two point, that's like? a two point takedown and three points for the near fall, I think. Jeff Hangartner, the interior lineman, is eligible. Williams goes outside, touchdown. Oh, good blocking up front. And once again, Travell Wharton with a big block, allowing D'Angelo Williams to take it in. Really a front side power and a terrific block by Travell Wharton. He is having a heck of a football game today up front. And watch him here at left guard. He's going to pull. Here he is here. He's going to pull outside and get the block right there. And that's just a tremendous mismatch. Pepper has got no chance against the 320 pound left guard Travell Wharton, who makes a big running lane out on the edge for D'Angelo Williams. John Casey puts it through. So the big turnover hurts the Packers. And Carolina has taken a 21 to 10 lead. Usually we talk about the the special players and the uh, skilled players. How about the interior lineman number 70 Wharton. No no play bigger than this one. I mean he gets the block that springs it and then he runs the length of the half the length of the field to, to get the fumble recovery. There's a big block on the touchdown by Jake DeLome and then another huge block creating an edge and taking out really two guys in Pepra and Desmond Bishop for D'Angelo Williams to take it around the corner. 
That's having a big day, and they and you know what? The guys on the sideline are noticing it. They're all coming up to him, shaking his hand, patting him on the back. And they, you know, they say that left side is really the, their anchor over on the left side. Travell Wharton and Jordan Gross, they don't have to ever worry about those two guys on that side of the ball. Travell Wharton's been extremely versatile. I said it earlier in the in the game. I mean, he's played tackle, he's played a lot of guard. He was, you know, was a tackle in college, came in and played guard, then played tackle. He's been around and came back from a serious injury and has played well. Squib kick. Jordy Nelson picks it up. Taken down short of the 30 yard line. Nick Goings in on the stop. We go to our man on the sideline, Chris Myers. Well, and Blackman on that return, you saw Nelson. Blackman will be able to return in the second half, but just the Packer injury list safety Atari Bigby with a shoulder injury in the locker room for x rays questionable. Ryan Grant bruised his hand. He was in pain. He's expected to be back in. And center Scott Wells uh, checking out the smelling salt. He had that glazed look, uh, Tim. They were checking for a concussion, so uh, not likely that we'll see him here. They hope he can return to the second half. Thank you Chris he was on the field on that return but Nelson was the man who fielded the ball. Well now they've got Spitz out there playing center. Three wide receivers in. Rodgers was hit as he threw. His arm was hit. And the pass coming up way short. Once again Charles Johnson we talked about Travell Wharton on the offense. Charles Johnson on the defense is having a big day for Carolina and he's one of the other guys that has flashed opposite Julius Peppers and they need more from somebody else. I mean Pep is clearly the guy up front to rush the passer and to get pressure but Charles Johnson's got four and a half sacks coming into the game. He started to flash here in year two and there you see Jason Spitz who's now had to take over at center for Scott Wells. On second down Rogers pressure from Peppers goes short it's off the hands of the tight end Donald Lee. It'll bring up a third down Packers. Trying to move the ball at the end of the first half maybe get it get some points they will get the ball to start the second half. Rogers has missed his last two. The rookie Josh Sitton, rookie out of Central Florida, has moved up into the right guard position with Jason Spitz moving over as the center. On third and ten. Hand it off to Brandon Jackson. Gets a couple of yards. And that'll be it. No, the, the Panthers call a quick timeout. With 14 seconds remaining, yeah, why not have a chance for a punt return? Why not? That's right. First time these two teams ever met was in 1996 season, the NFC Championship game. Red. Reggie White was there. Kerry Collins Before was the, the great quarterback beard. for Carolina. But it was a Brett Favre day with touchdown passes to Dorsey Levins and Antonio Friedman. Uh, Freeman and Edgar Bennett had the big run for a touchdown. Packers won 30 to 13, went to the Super Bowl and won that too. Derek Frost with his fourth punt of the game. The numbers aren't bad, but the fans have been all over him for a couple of short punts. He's got good rolls. Mark Jones is deep at his old 25. Frost gets it away. Good kick. Jones from the 22. Trying to find some room. And he's tripped up. Just short of the 35-yard line. With two seconds remaining. Stay tuned at halftime. We've got the Visa halftime report with Kurt, Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy there to analyze things, check scores and highlights. Fox Sports ticker gets you up to date on your fantasy team and how it's doing. A good first half for the Carolina Panthers who have struggled on the road. Last season they were a good road team. This season They've been perfect well, at two, home. Two and three on the road this year. And, and Jake DeLome said it. We need to come in here and have a fast start. And they've done exactly that. As you see, 21 points here in the first half. And a couple of big runs were the difference. And another injury to the Packers. The rookie, Jeremy Thompson, has to be helped to the sideline. Packers put 19 players on the injury report to start the week. Halftime. 
and a good half for the Carolina Panthers. The good sign early was that they scored a first quarter touchdown. They overcame a fumble on a long play to Moussin Muhammad, but the guard, Travell Wharton, had a good first half, and it's 21 to 10, Green Bay at halftime. Welcome back to Lambeau Field. Getting set for the start of the second half. Sam Rosen, Tim Ryan, Chris Myers. The California man doesn't feel the cold at all. We're Carolina good. not fielding the cold because they got the start that they wanted in that first half. Well, they wanted to come out and start fast, and they did it running the football. And it's really two real big runs that separate the two teams right now. Uh, 21 points in the first half, obviously terrific. But it's not just the fast start on the offensive side of the ball that Jake DeLone talked about. It Defensively, they started fast as well because when you look at Green Bay and you looked at their first quarter numbers, both running game and Aaron Rodgers through the air, uh, Green Bay was the team that was off to a slow start today. And here's the early eyes that we had on a couple of key points in this game. Fast start, Carolina first quarter. They got it, seven points, 96 yards. The run defense for the Packers, we talked about that needing to improve today. Um, it's not very good at all. 101 yards already and three rushing touchdowns against that defense. And then the injuries coming in. Tauscher has actually held up. Uh, the safeties have not. And I think they're stressed on the back end when you look at how they came into the game and where are they now at halftime. And our partner Chris Myers has an updated halftime. Chris. Well, as uh, Jeremy Thompson just came back out, he was hurt on the last play. Defensive lineman for the Packers treated his leg. They hope they'll be able to use him. Atari Bigby don't count on it because of the shoulder injury. Scott Wells, Mike McCarthy said, I don't think we're going to be able to count on him in the second half. Shake it up. They think it's a concussion, but Ryan Grant will be ready to go. He said he wants Aaron Rodgers to get his timing going and they can rally in a turnovers now for the Panthers John Fox said we got the fast start now we want a fast finish Jim Skipper running back coach uh, telling me that Jonathan Stewart with the cramp has a hamstring they're gonna try to get him going in the second half but not very reliable and uh, Sam and Tim a parachute jump that was planned for halftime was canceled because of the winds and snow threatening the area thanks Chris on the squib kick will Blackman on the return and he looks very healthy on that one as he gets up to the 42 yard line and I think the win will be a factor here in the second half and, and more notably clearly through the air and throwing the football if it's Sam if it's moving Chris Chris Myers hair like that it's blowing Did you see his hair down yeah, there it was moving that's yeah. a heavy Chris gust. was strong uh, you know in the first half the pregame show he was very warm when he showed us the heating system getting cold down there Packers start from the 42 Jason Spitz is the center Josh Sitton the rookie is the right guard Scott Wells is out Donald Lee shifts and the toss is to Ryan Grant who cuts it back and has room turns it into a big one it's Brandon Jackson on the run excuse me Brandon Jackson with the big run as he carries down to the 26 yard line couple things to look at this is the guy the running backs making the read on if he gets upfield cut it back and then Julius Peppers here gets a little nosy and peaks he's on a slant he comes crashing down inside good seal block there on Nile Diggs and there it is for Brandon Jackson and my apologies Jackson showing great quickness Dallas carried just four times for 56 yards big run from the 26 off the play fake Rogers feels some pressure from Peppers got rid of it but a little low for Greg Jennings it'll bring up a second and ten for the Packers Chris Campbell who as we mentioned right at the top with the signing of the six year extension a real big plus we go back to Brandon Jackson well and he had the most carries of the year at their last home game he had 10 so coming into the game today he's just short of five yards a pop he's number four in catches he's been a nice little weapon second round pick now going into year he's in year two Jordy Nelson in it as the third wide receiver screen pass for Jackson he bobbled it and it's incomplete it was almost picked out of the air by Charles Godfrey And when he comes in the game, it's screen alert. I want you to watch the safety right here in Charles Godfrey. He's already looking for the screen. They told us yesterday, look, when 32 comes in the game, he's the guy that runs all their screens. That's a screen alert for us. Best thing to do when you see a screen and sniff it out, go get it. 
And you saw there, Godfrey was all over it. It was a bad throw. Highly Taylor, number 66, in at defensive end for the Panthers on third and 10. Rodgers steps up, looking. Finally throws, and it's off the hands of Donald Driver. Covered by Richard Marshall on the play. I thought that pass was catchable. That thing had some heat on it now. It had some zip, and it was tailing at the end. I don't know if he would have caught it if he would have been in bounds. Well, close that ball to the was sideline, you're right. Hot. This is a 44-yard field goal try for Mason Crosby. Derek Frost, the holder. Gets it away and puts it through. Good kick by Mason Crosby. He's two for two in the game. Packers start the second half with three points. They're still down by eight. Oh, I love the hats. I love the outfits. It's starting to chill a little bit. The wind is picked up. Yeah, that's the Temperature's deal right there. dropping. Where's that snow? Can you see it? It's out there. It is expected later today. We'll see if it holds up throughout the game. Mason Crosby kicks it off. Good line drive kick. Mark Jones, four yards deep, takes a knee. Crosby's second touchback of the game. NFL on Fox next week. It's doubleheader day, beginning with the Built for Tough pregame show. Vikings and Lions, Falcons and Saints, Eagles and Giants early. Later on, Cowboys and Steelers, Rams and the Cardinals next week at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. It all begins. Tim and I will be in Detroit. That's a can't miss, baby. The Minnesota Vikings, big game for them. And the Lions trying to find that first win of the season. Angelo Williams and Brad Hoover in the backfield. Moose and Muhammad in motion. It's Williams. Gets a couple of yards. Ryan Pickett leads the Packers defense on the stop, number 79. You know, you, you, you talk about D'Angelo Williams and what a year he's had. And John Fox said from last year to this year, he's made the most remarkable gain of anybody on the football team. He's really exploded. I think in watching him, I, I think I, in, in talking to the guys down there, there's a couple of reasons why. Remember when he was at Memphis, he was almost like a in the Wildcat. He was almost playing quarterback and running the football all the time. You play tailback in this league, so much of it is reading the blocks in front of you and being on the same page with the O lineman. He's figuring it out. It's Williams again. And he gets up just short of the 30 yard line. D'Angelo Williams is on a streak that has tied a franchise record. Four straight 100 yard rushing games against Arizona, against Oakland, a big 140, followed by 120 against the Lions. And last week, 101 yards against Atlanta. He's had five 100-yard games this season. He's closing in on 1,000 yards. And this is third season in the NFL. And he's got enough for the first down. Desmond Bishop on the tackle. But D'Angelo Williams gets the first down. What, what people don't know is really how thick he is from the waist down. He is all legs now, and he's got a lot more power. Look at those legs. He's got a lot more power than anybody's really given him credit for. And then you were talking about those 400-yard games. Look at how many of those big runs were really between the tackles. Downhill runs. People always looked at him and said, ah, he's a bounce guy. He gets to the perimeter. Not necessarily. He likes to run straight downhill. Jonathan Stewart is back in. Had a big 43-yard run and then fumbled early in the game. First catch of the game for Steve Smith. Lined up against Tremont Williams. And he picks up seven yards up to the 38-yard line. Let's check out New Orleans and Tampa Bay. Here's Kurt Menefe. Speaking of first, this is the first touchdown in 14 months from Cadillac Williams. Played his first game after that knee surgery last year. Last week, scores today to give the Bucs a 13-10 lead in the third quarter. Sam and Tim looks like he's all the way back from that blown-out knee. And that's great to see, Kurt. Thanks so much for that update. Big game again, NFC South teams. Jonathan Stewart carries for a first down. Strong run by the rookie from Oregon as he gets up to the 45-yard line. He's had a very good year. 13th overall pick, and that, that's the guy now. You talk about a power back. I said it earlier, he's 240 pounds and really can run over linebackers and 
can run away from some safeties in this league. Jason Hunter, number 57, in at defensive end, replacing Mike Montgomery for the Packers. Jeremy Thompson went out with an injury earlier. Two tight ends. Jonathan Stewart running back. Malone puts it up short and complete. Intended for Dante Rosario. They're going to call interference on Woodson. A flag went down late. Mike McCarthy doesn't like it. He wants to see a replay. Boy, it's almost like the ball was already by Dante Rosario by the time, and, and I know he's calling for uncatchable ball right there, Mike McCarthy. By the time the contact came, I will not be surprised if they don't pick this flag up. Really, because by the time the contact got there with Woodson over his back, it almost looked like the ball had already passed Dante Rosario. What a great shot of the There is two. no foul for defensive pass interference. The ball was beyond the receiver when the contact occurred. Good job Second by down. the officials. John Fox certainly doesn't like the call. And look at the location of the football when the contact is no contact, no contact, no contact, no contact. The ball is already it's here by, by the time the contact gets there by Charles Woodson. That's a good pickup of the flag. Three tight ends in for Carolina. Jeff King, Dante Rosario, and Gary Barnage. D'Angelo Williams back in the backfield. On second and ten. Colon gets time. And a pass almost picked off by Nick Collins, who is tied for the league lead with five interceptions. A dangerous throw by Jake DeLome. Well, and, and it's going to be Brandon Chiller right here. Steve's going to run a little in route. Chiller gets some good contact on him right there, and then Nick Collins jumps it and drops the interception. Five defensive Oh, yeah, no, that hit Chiller right in, the, uh, right in the ribs. Justin Harrell in on the defensive line for the Packers. Just get the playoff on third and ten. Complete to Smith. And he is brought down short of the first down. Nick Collins grabbed him and refused to let go. Steve Smith making the catch. But Collins with a good tackle. There's Brady Papinga with the helmet back on. Here's that bump coverage. Tremont Williams just bailing, now going to get in his hip pocket. That's a heck of a tackle by, by Nick Collins. Steve Smith is so explosive from the waist down. He is hard to tackle one-on-one -on -one in open field, and that's a first down saver right there by Nick Collins. And look at this. Carolina is lining up to go for it. They are three for eight on fourth downs. They almost went wildcat. Time running down. He's trying to draw him offside. Malone trying to draw him offside any way he could. They shifted. Liam Dean, offense, number 17. Carolina Five takes the penalty. The, their first penalty of the game. I think Delone wants to play in there quicker, <laughs> does he? <laughs> He's talking about he wants the, time. the time was winding down. Jake is intense. Jason Baker's fourth punt of the game. Will Blackman is in on the return. He's standing back in his own 10-yard line. Baker gets it away. Good high punt. Wind holds it up. Blackman lets it bounce. And once again, the ball will be down inside the 10. Second time in the game. That the Packers will start from deep in their own territory. This time at the 5. 47-yard punt. They got the Packer cut man at work down there on Brady Papinga, who just came on a rush. Here he is right here. He's going to lose his helmet, and Travell Wharton's going to go helmet to head. Watch this. Pop Whoa. right there. Papinga keeps going, though. So he knocked the helmet off, and he got, sure. got head-butted. Packers from the five. Rodgers puts it up on first down and puts it up deep for Donald Driver. Oh. What a catch. What a catch by Donald Driver. Down at the Panthers 49 yard line 46 yards. 
And I'll tell you, the, the, this throw and this wind is pretty remarkable. He takes the inside away from Chris Gamble. Now watch him lay out right on the fingertips and pulls it in. Terrific throw, better catch. Packers had had only two pass plays longer than nine yards in the game until that one. That was perfect. Brandon Jackson in the backfield. With Corey Hall, the fullback. Beautiful throw by Aaron Rodgers. He steps back now. Play of game, offense, number 12, five yard penalty, first down. So after the long game, well, that's too much it. time well, getting that's the play it right in. there. And that's just, that's the youth of, of Aaron Rodgers, the inexperience. And you don't, th you know, his clock didn't really go off in his head thinking that he had the time. But when you, when you make a long throw like that and then the play clock starts right away, Obviously, it takes a while to run down to back to you know to where the line of scrimmage and the line of gain is to get the playoff, and he lost track of the play clock. Three wide receivers in. James Jones in for the Packers. First and 15. Rodgers feel some pressure. Damian Lewis chasing him. Rodgers turns it upfield. Beautiful run. He stayed in bounds and gets a first down. Run of 16 yards for Aaron Rodgers down to the 38-yard line. And he's been Aaron Rodgers effective at doing this all year. Charles Johnson is going to get upfield. Aaron Rodgers drops back, steps up, and then pops out underneath the upfield defensive end. And when Aaron Rodgers runs to his right, I mean, he's very effective. You can see guys are covered up pretty good down the field, but he's got the mobility to get you positive yards and pick up first downs with his legs. He's got over 180 yards rushing this season. He's third on the team. Play fake. Rodgers with time. He throws and completes to Greg Jennings, who hangs on. The ball was slipping. He grabbed it, held on, and it's a first down at the 23, and one of the Panthers is hurt. That's Ken Lucas shaking up on the play. Aaron Rodgers has all day to throw the football. He's just going to sit back, sit back, sit back, and then he's going to unload the in route right in front of the zone. And that's where Kenny Lucas got hurt. Ken Lucas assisted to the sideline being checked out. He's replaced by Richard Marshall in the secondary for the Panthers. Packers with a first down to Carolina 23. Rodgers gets rid of it. Caught by Jennings. Tripped up. Falls forward to the 18-yard line. He picked up five on the play. Greg Jennings has now gone over 1,000 yards receiving this season. His first 1,000-yard season. This is third year in the NFL. Four catches, 41 yards. Make it now five catches for Greg Jennings. 46 yards. Second and five. Brandon Jackson in the backfield. Three wide receivers. Rogers short drop. Fakes. In trouble. The ball batted up. Intercepted by Richard Marshall. No, it dropped. It dropped out. He didn't hold on. He did not hold on. He had it, but when he went to the ground, it popped loose. I think it's just a good job by it looks like Darren College who knocked it out as Richard Marshall was going down with it. Here's the guy that does the pressure right here. Julius Peppers. That ball just comes out there. Richard Marshall's got it. And you see Darren College who puts the hammer on him right there along with Mark Tauscher and the ball comes out. It's like a receiver when he goes to the ground. He must possess, gotta possess it all the way past the ground. That pass hit one of the Panthers in the helmet. Brandon Jackson in the backfield on third and five. Rodgers throws to double driver. First down at the 12-yard line. Let's check out the Giants and Redskins for an update and go to Kurt Benefee. You may have heard this combination before. Brandon Jacobs touchdown. A little unorthodox for him going airborne. Nonetheless, pending the extra point, it's a 19-7 lead in the third quarter for the Giants. Sam, Tim, and Chris. Thanks very much, Kurt. Extra point has been made. Giants now lead 20 to 7. Tampa Bay leading New Orleans 20 to 10 in an important game. As they are 8 and 3 starting play. 
That pass is caught by Je Jennings. They're, They're calling for, for a pick. Car Carolina's Jeez. calling for an interception. What do the officials say? Chris Campbell got up with it. John Fox is ready to challenge. Yes, there we go. <laughs> the fast challenge. He wants to make sure they see him. And he see the velocity the on that flag? All right, let's see. Greg Jennings on the slant route. The ball is low. He goes down with it. And it looked like Gamble just ripped it from him as they go to the ground. Hard to tell if there's any possession if that ball touched the ground and bobbled at all from that angle. Well, who had the ball? Who came away with the ball? That's the big question here. Carolina is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed catch. Gene Steratour will go under the hood and check it out. Greg Jennings against Chris Gamble. Looks like Jennings had it. Did Gamble pull it away? John Fox throwing the challenge flag on this play. Call the catch on the field. I think they'll have to stay with it because I don't really think you can overturn it based on what you see right there from those angles. I don't think there's anything we've been able to see that shows you either that he dropped it or that Chris Gamble wrestled it away and had full possession. Yeah, the ball just kind of disappears in between the right leg and and Chris Gamble, you can't see who really controlled it on the way to the ground, nor can you see if the ball hit the ground. So I think that really they have no choice but to stay with what was called on the field, Sam, was which, what was a catch. Well, if the call stands, as Greg Jennings wants it to stand, Packers would have a second and three at the five-yard line. Packers have not had a turnover in the red zone this season. They've been, this has been a really good drive oh for, for Aaron Rodgers yeah. and the Packers offense. And it, remember, it all started down deep in his own goal line after that good punt with the long strike to Donald Driver down the sideline on Chris Gamble. From the five-yard line. Here's another look at it, the slant route. And you, again, you can't see. You can't see what happens with the ball as Jennings was trying to pull it in with his right hand and Gamble was trying to pull it out with two hands. Here's Gene Starr. After review, the ruling on the field stands. It is a completed catch. Green Bay. Carolina will be charged with its first timeout. All right. Jennings on the catch. Carolina timeout on the challenge. And the Packers drive has gone 90 yards from their five to the Carolina five. And it's a second and three. They've got the full house backfield, the two fullbacks, Corey Hall and John Kuhn are in with Brandon Jackson, the running back. Rogers still with it. Throwing to the corner. Touchdown, Donald Lee, the tight end. Touchdown pass of the game thrown by Aaron Rodgers. And the Packers are going for two to try and tie the game. But that was just a great job by Donald Lee selling the run game. Block, 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 block on Nile Diggs. And then he just released to the corner of the pylon. And Aaron Rodgers found it. Out of the shotgun. Two tight ends. Looking left, throwing left. Two-point conversion is good. Greg Jennings, the game is tied. The Green Bay Packers tie it up as Aaron Rodgers passing finishes off their longest drive of the season. 95 yards. Touchdown and a two-point conversion. Donald Lee with his 
fourth touchdown catch of the season to finish off a 95 yard drive longest of the season by the Packers but how about Aaron Rodgers passing six for seven on that drive 84 yards the wind picking up now here at Lambeau Field Crosby line drive kick blocked by Hangartner Dante Rosario the tight end picks it up just across the 20 yard line. I don't know about Hank Gardner trying to grab that line drive kickoff. Watch the play action fake on the touchdown. Look at how it holds the linebacker, the safety, and the outside backer, Nile Diggs. And then watch as Donald Lee to the left of your screen, then releases after showing the block. And Aaron Rodgers finds him for the touchdown. Just a beautiful job by Aaron Rodgers. Selling the fake. Now again, Donald Lee, block, 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 release. Back to the pylon, corner of the end zone. And a terrific throw. Panthers start from the 21. Jonathan Stewart in it running back, two tight ends. Brad Hoover, the fullback. Stewart behind Hoover. And Ota gets up to the 24 three yard line. Gain of two on the play. Charles Woodson came up to make the tackle. Charles Woodson has had a terrific season. I mean, you think of his five interceptions coming in, but he's been real good in run support. Watch him flash to the left side of your screen here. He's got big Ota, 79, who outweighs him by over 100 pounds, and he just slips back inside and gets in on the tackle. We're going to do this the easy way. I'll go under underneath the truck and get in on the tackle rather than go through him. D.J. Hackett in as the third wide receiver for Carolina. With two backs. On second and eight. Gallon pressure almost lost the ball. Aaron Campin with his second sack almost knocked the ball loose. Gallon did well to grab it and prevent a fumble. Well, and look at how he comes underneath. Here he's going to press up field, and then when Jake steps up, he comes back underneath. He's trying to work that rip. Doesn't get it, sees the quarterback step up, so he falls back in inside. Now it's a swat to get the ball out. Boy, that's real good work by DeLome, able to corral that thing and hang on to it and not lose it. But Campman once again, I mean, two Pro Bowls over the last two years, is one of the better sack uh, pass rushing defensive ends, Sam, in the pro game. Two sacks in the game, it's third and ten. Swing it out to Nick Goings, but he falls down. And the Packers are all over him. At the 16 yard line. The momentum is carrying now for the Packers. They have come from 11 points down twice in this game. They have tied it, and it's a three and out. Good effort by the Packers defense. Baker. Blackman is deep. Sixth punt of the game for Jason Baker. Good high kick. Blackman from the 31. Can he get outside? And a good job. There's a flag down. It's going to be an illegal block. Yeah, don't get it on John Boone, I think. Yeah. You can see he's upset with himself. 51-yard 50 50 punt by Baker, who's kicked very well in this game. Just a two-yard return. And check out the flag. During the return, a legal block in the back, number 30 of the return team, 10 yard penalty, first down Green Bay. And it's brought back to the 24 yard line. Check out the NFC South, and here's what's left in this race Tampa Bay will be at Carolina, at Atlanta, then home for the last two games. Carolina, Tampa Bay, Denver at home. Then they have to go on the road to the Giants and the New Orleans. Look, it's not easy for anybody in that division. This one's coming down to the last couple of weeks of the season to see who wins it. Rodgers to put it up. Pressure for Peppers. Julius Peppers with another sack. His first of the game, his 10th in the last 10 games, and his fifth career 10 sack season. And watch how he gets upfield and then knocks the hands down and creates a little space to get a vision point of the quarterback. You see, he gets a vision point there of Aaron Rodgers that Aaron Rodgers is going to step up and then is able with a little bit of space just to use his left hand to swipe 
Clifton out of the way and fall back inside for the sack. Ken Lucas back in at right quarterback for the Panthers. Packers from the 19-yard line, a second and 15. Four wide receivers. Rodgers puts it up. And a little too far on the pass for James Jones, covered well by Chris Gamble. Bring up a third and long. And both the ends, good pressure. Peppers is going to come inside, and then watch Charles Johnson's going to take it on the outside. Aaron Rodgers has to get rid of this ball before he gets sacked for the second time in a row, gets sandwiched between the two D ends there. Eileen Taylor comes in at defensive end for Carolina, and Landon Johnson is on the field, number 54. Third and 15. Have to get to the 34 for a first down. Rodgers puts it up and it's caught. Journey, Journey Nelson with a first down across the 40. Good grab by Nelson. And he got some extra yards when he slipped the tackle. A 23-yard pickup. You got Ken Lucas, who's in a deep drop. He's got the deep third of the field. Jordy Nelson, very intelligent player. Their second-round pick this year just knows where the sticks are, the first down marks, and just drives the defender off and then puts on the brakes and turns and catches what ends up being a big first down. Good job by the rookie out of Kansas State. Brandon Jackson getting up to the 45-yard line. Pick up a three on the play. Packers have had a big third quarter. Oh, look at that. Wow. Look at that contrast in total yards. They now have over 300 yards total offense, 190 yards passing. Well, we asked how Aaron Rodgers would be in the cold. So far, it's been pretty good. He's like you, California guy. You don't feel it. Second and seven, the play fake. Rodgers rolls, stops, and finds Donald Lee. First down at the Panthers' 39-yard line. Aaron Rodgers, 20 for 33 in the game. Donald Lee is going to start right here and ends up coming back across the middle of the field. Look at this throw by Aaron Rodgers in between four defenders. I mean, he just threads that thing in there. One, two, three, four guys, and he lasers it right on the mark. Super throw. Three wide receivers in. James Jones is in as the third wide out. Corey Humphrey, the tight end. Rodgers throwing short to Brandon Jackson. Slips one. Chris Harris got enough of him to upset him and he fell down across the 35 to the 33 and we go downstairs to our first down man Chris Myers <laughs> uh, Sam impressive again doing this without their starting center Scott Wells Ryan Grant who hasn't played the second half where totals available but they're going with Brandon Jackson who has the hot hand and the Packers appear hot in chilly temperature at Lambeau Field. Back in Lambeau Field, Sam Rosen, Tim Ryan, Chris Myers. We start the fourth quarter. The Packers on the move at the Carolina 33, a second and four. Rodgers, short drop, completes it for a first down to Ruvel Martin. This is the drive that tied it up. Aaron Rodgers starts in his own end zone, throws a beautiful football deep to Donald Driver. Then he gets a penalty for delay a game. Didn't panic. Came back, Sam, and started throwing darts. That one to Greg Jennings. This one to Donald Driver. That one right there, the touchdown to Donald Lee. Then they came and ran the two-pointer and got a touchdown on that as well, and we're all tied up. Two tight ends. Got the two-point, and we're all tied up. Greg Jennings, a long wide receiver. Brandon Jackson been the only running back here in the second half. Ryan Grant has not come back after being shaken up in the first half. First year starting quarterbacks, 20 yard runs and passes. Nobody more than this man, Aaron Rodgers, and he's added to that today. 
what's amazing is how many people are talking about Matt Ryan, talking about Matt Castle, talking about Joe Flacco, and really in a lot of categories, Aaron Rodgers is perched above him. Rodgers, short drop, gets time thrown. Jennings beat Ken Lucas. A 21-yard touchdown pass, and the Packers have the lead for the first time today. Three touchdown passes in the game for Aaron Rodgers. Greg Jennings with his seventh touchdown reception. The extra point is good. Nine plays, 76 yards. The Packers are on the move in the second half. Sam, here's the touchdown, and I think it was a bust. Watch the deep safety here, Charles Godfrey. He rolls over here to driver. Lucas is dropping back, trying to push everything to the inside. Thinks he's got help in the middle, and Greg Jennings just spins him around, takes it to the middle of the field, and what ends up looking like an easy touchdown. Throw and catch from Aaron Rodgers to Greg Jennings. Greg Jennings, I mean, he's got so much speed, and, and clearly Kenny Lucas is playing for the out route. Greg Jennings cuts it back up inside, gets Ken Lucas to roll over the top is what they call it. He's got to completely turn his back to the quarterback, and Aaron Rodgers picks at it, throws a nice touchdown. Greg Jennings, seven catches, 74 yards, including a 21-yarder for a touchdown. Mason Crosby kicks it off. Mark Jones, one yard deep. There's a lane there. Jones breaks through. Trying to beat Crosby, he does. And then he's caught from behind, but he gets back to midfield. Jared Bush may have saved a touchdown with a tackle of Mark Jones, a 50-yard return I'll That's tell you it. who saves the touchdown and, and Jared Bush is going to get credit for it but it's the kicker now his job is you don't really want this guy tackling and here he is right here but watch Crosby he does enough to make Jones cut slow down go sideways and then it can catch up right there from Jared Bush Kenny Petway, the injured Packers player. and another Packer down on the field Kenny Petway shaking up Crosby sticking his nose hey, he does in there. just enough and watch him stick his head right there. It doesn't look good. He misses the tackle, but forces Mark Jones to cut, slow down his pace, and Bush is able to catch up to him and get the touchdown saving tackle. Now Jake DeLone's got a lead to come back off the play fake. He wants to go deep, but his receiver fell down. It's intercepted. There's a flag on the play. Trevon Williams on the return. Williams picks up a couple of blocks. Slipped away from Jeff King and then goes down at the Panther 44. And we check out the flag. Yeah, Jermon Williams turned and held Moosin Muhammad. Moosin Muhammad did a double move and out and up. And as he started to get by Jermon Williams, it looked like Jermon Williams wrapped him up and got him around the waist. And there he is right there. Moosin does the, yeah, there it oh, is. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. Pass interference, defense, number 38, automatic, first down. That is a long one. Tremont Williams, who's playing the corner position with Charles Woodson moved to the inside at strong safety with all the injuries that they've had. Well, and you saw last week the double moves from the New Orleans Saints were able to get these guys on the back end because they play so aggressively. And they really want to jump all your first cuts. And as soon as you do that, and then it's a double move, it's you know, they're really caught in a predicament. And that time, in order not to get beat deep, Tremont Williams had to wrap up Moose and Muhammad around the waist to try to slow him down. Ball spotted at the Packers 36-yard line. Two tight ends in for Carolina, Dante Rosario and Jeff King. D'Angelo Williams in the backfield. Carries. Trying to get outside. 
Good tackle on the play by Brady Papinga. He grabbed his ankle and refused to let go. Here's Papinga right here. Excuse me. Here's Papinga right here. He's going to get up. He's just going to stay right at the line of scrimmage. He's reading. He's reading. He's reading. He's reading the cutback. And does not fall for what the tight end did leading up inside. He just stayed right in his gap of responsibility and took care of the cutback run. Loss of two on that play. Here's Williams again. Cuts it back the other way. And gets nothing. Packers defense fired up. This is the third possession of the second half for the Panthers. They had an eight play drive, a three and out, now this one. Well, we saw the last time Papinga tackled the cutback. This time he gets frontside and forces the cutback. I mean, he's gonna get right up inside on Hoover, takes Hoover and the puller, and forces the running back to cut back right to where his defenders were awake. Two tight ends in for Carolina on third and 11. Malone pressured, steps up and throws for Steve Smith. He's got it. What a catch by Smith. He's down at the one-yard line. He was one-on-one -on -one with Tremont Williams, and it's a 36-yard pickup for the Panthers. We're going to motion him. Remember, I talked about motioning him to get him freed up, and he's just going to run straight down the middle of the field, really a post route. And I don't know what Nick Collins saw. Nick Collins bit on something up inside, which clearly put Tremont Williams man up on Steve Smith, and that's where Steve Smith is so good. You give him a chance to go get it, man coverage, match up one-on-one -on -one with somebody more times than not, Steve comes down. First football. First and goal. Here's Williams to the goal line. He's in. Touchdown. The Angelo Williams. So the Carolina Panthers answer right back starting with the great kickoff return by Mark Jones that set him up in midfield the penalty the pass interference penalty and then the big pass and catch to Steve Smith this is some game a game that both these teams need badly in their race for the playoffs Mike McCarthy looking up to see if D'Angelo Williams had gotten over. He did. John Casey for the extra point to tie the game. Oh, well, we've got a lot of good football to go. Steve Smith is the number one man. He got shut out in the first half, but here in the second half, he makes the big catch to the one, and D'Angelo Williams carries it in. Back in Lambeau, we invite you to stay tuned. The postgame show brought to you by AT&T, exclusive BCA, BCS standings, and we're told, we don't know what they are, big changes in the BCS standings, which will affect what's going on next week as the selection show. We'll find out who's going to which BCS Bowl. We'll find out later today which team's going to the Big 12 championship game. Right now here, the game tied. At 28, backing up is Will Blackman. It's a touchback on the kickoff by Reese Lloyd. You know, we were talking about Nick Collins. Earlier in the season, he gets away with jumping routes a lot, and that's why he's made interceptions. And you saw him do it there against Gus Farratt, took that back for a touchdown. Watch him here as he's going to bite a teaser route up in front of him from Moosin Muhammad, which allows, see, as he bites that, Steve Smith gets behind him and leaves Steve really out leveraging Tremont Williams the corner, and Jake just puts it up and really was a key play on that drive, getting him right down inside the five for the touchdown punch in. Fourth possession of the second half for the Packers. They've scored on all three thus far. A field goal, two touchdown. Brandon Jackson, stop. No gain on the play. Niall Diggs, the former Packer, who played here for six years, leading the way on the defensive charge. Terrific play there. Taking on the fullback and keeping his outside arm free to where he could get in on the tackle. And, and Jake DeLone was telling us yesterday, he rode the bus over with Niall Diggs. And he said, how was it playing here? Now Diggs was a very good linebacker here for six years. He said, there is absolutely nothing like it. Jake said, I was getting juiced up just talking to him. Heavy clouds rolling in. We could get snow any minute. Four wide receivers for the Packers. 
empty backfield. Rodgers throws short. He's got a man, Rubel Martin. Up to the 38-yard line, a first down. Rodgers' passing game has been sharp here in the second half. A pickup of 17. Charles Godfrey just busts here. Here's Godfrey, the safety. He's going to get out, and they double out here. He thinks he's got the flat. Two guys in the flat, and Ruvel Martin squeezes it inside on a slant route. Aaron Rodgers, with a blitz in his face, finds it for the first down pickup. Four wide receivers again. Getting good protection is Aaron Rodgers. He's been sacked once. But even with the empty backfield, he's got time to throw, and this time connects with James Jones up to the 41-yard line. Let's go to Chris Myers. No snow yet, Chris. <laughs> Not yet, but Sam, you can see why Mark McCarthy was calm at halftime, saying, I want to get Rodgers into a rhythm. And you talked about how you and Tim, how Aaron handled the takeover for Brett Favre. He alienated some Packer fans in the offseason when he said, hey, just get over all the drama. But from the fans to the old of Driver, the new of Jennings, they appreciate the professionalism and the ability of Aaron Rodgers, who is definitely their man. 13 for 18 in the second half, Chris. He is definitely in rhythm. Here he throws quickly to Rubel Martin up to the 44-yard line. It'll bring up a third down and four for the Packers as we check out the dark clouds that have moved in overhead as they anticipate snow this afternoon. Aaron Rodgers, first year, his first year starting quarterback, he leads all first year starting quarterbacks. Well, we asked running. him, we asked him on Friday, we said, how is it? He goes, man, he absolutely loves playing. He said, just being back out there again and having an opportunity to get the ball in your hands and be part of it every Sunday. He, and he looked and he just lit up. He looked at us, he says, fellas, I'm loving it. Timeout call. We'll be right back. We weren't kidding. There's the snow. Next Sunday is prime time. The All-State BCS Selection Show will find out where the teams are going to which bowl games. And later today, exclusive BCS standings on the post-game show. Rodgers in trouble. Runs for the first down. There's the mobility we talked about. He got out of trouble and got it up for the first down. Damian Lewis tripped him up. And again, it's to the right side. The left right, left end gets up field. He escapes right underneath him. And then how about the vision point? As Julius Peppers was going to go cut him off, Aaron Rodgers reads it, cuts up field, lays out head first, first down. Four runs for 24 yards for Aaron Rodgers. His passing has been pretty good, too. 26 for 39, 268 yards. Brandon Jackson slipped a couple of tackles and picked up four yards on the play. The Packers have had a big second half. Brandon Jackson has had a nice day, hadn't he? Yes. He's got eight, eight or nine carries, I think. I know he's under 10, and he's up over eight yards of pops. 69 yards, had that big 32-yard run. Tight ends in. And second and six. We got the six. Motions. And Brandon Jackson fighting his way, trying to get to the first down mark. But he's a little bit short. Gets down to the 42 yard line. Niall Diggs on the tackle. Really good block by Donald Lee, who's had a nice game. He's going to be right here and watch him come hit Thomas Davis and drive him out of the hole. Well, he's going to hit and just continue to wall him off and push him out, which creates a nice little gap. And then Brandon Jackson's able to break up the tackle and, on Beeson and pick up a couple of extra yards. Eight for 14 on third down plays of the Packers in the game. Here's third and two. Rodgers puts it up to the tight end. To the first down is Jermichael Finley. They got to come measure this one. This is close. Finley, the rookie tight end, is 6'5". I think he may have come up a little short. That is going to be real close. Thomas Davis made the tackle. 
They will bring in the chains from the far side to measure this one. Well, John Fox told Chris Myers they needed a, they got the strong start. They need a strong finish, but it's the Packers who have really outplayed Carolina here in the second half. They stretch it. Got it. Oh. No, it's no. an inch. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You can't get any closer. Gene Steratore is looking, looking, trying to determine if the <laughs> nose of the football is touching. No, he says no. And it's literally one inch away from a first down. Fourth and an inch. Really a nice catch by Jermichael Finley. He reaches out and grabs it. And there's the knee down. There's That's a good spot. That is a good spot. Where the football was, you could see when the knee hit where the football was. And look at the snow starting to come down sideways. It's coming. The wind is blowing. It is really picked up. And now the crowd getting loud. are five for 12 this season on fourth down conversions. Coon's been four for four in the 30, the fullback. Quarterback sneak diving for first down is Rodgers. He put the ball out there dangerously, but he had those big mitts around it. Jason Spitz, who moved over to center, led the way. Well, uh, submarine in order the defensive tackles. And you saw the lefty tackle there go really down low to try to get some surge and Aaron Rodgers just goes over the top and lays the ball out in front of the, the plane of the first down and picks it up. First down for the Packers just inside the 40 yard line. Tenth play of this drive. Off the play fake. Rodgers the deep drop has time and he finds a man. Greg Jennings inside the 25. Well spotted at the 22. 17 yard pickup. And the key is the time that Aaron Rodgers has because watch him survey the field. He's going to drop back. He's going to look left, look left, look left. He actually had Donald Lee and then gets Greg Jennings on a late inside dig route. Good Jennings look out to the sideline and then just break it off in front of the safety Charles Godfrey. And Aaron Rodgers gets it to him. Jennings with his eighth catch of the game that ties a career high. Donald Lee in motion. Short drop. Rogers throws. Complete to Driver. Driver to the 10. Fighting inside the 10 yard line. Down at the nine. In the first half, Aaron Rodgers had just two completions of 10 yards or more. Here in the second half, he's had eight been terrific and they have dominated dominated time of possession and I think the confusion continues they both two defenders go out here with Tory Humphrey I mean you see Nile Diggs in the corner back out there with Humphrey and Donald Driver coming off that little snug set just takes it inside turns around on the hook route and gets the gets the first down first and goal at the nine Corey Hall the fullback Brandon Jackson the running back they stop the play Delay of game, offense, number 12, five-yard penalty, first down. Second delay of game against the Packers. Mike McCarthy sending the plays in. And really good stuff in terms of the play selection. And, and look at what they've been able to do ball control here wow. in the second half of this game. I mean, total domination by the Green Bay Packers. And, and you think of the play selection on this last drive. I think five, five runs, six passes. And good play calling, good execution from the quarterback and the receiver. You saw Jake DeLong, all he can do is sit and wait. Two tight ends in. So Michael Finley and Donald Lee, everybody out. Rodgers in trouble. Being chased by Tyler Brayton and chased him out of bounds. On the late hit. Bad play by Julius Peppers. Tough. Watch him break contain. 
gets good coverage downfield. He's got nowhere to go with the ball. Again, he escapes out the side door to his right, which he's done all day today. And then Peppers coming up late and just lays the wood on his back after Aaron Rodgers had already stepped out of bounds. Unnecessary roughness. Late hit out of bounds. Defense number 90. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. And you know, Aaron Rodgers has played through a shoulder. We talked about it earlier, sprained his shoulder earlier in the year. And, and he said, and, and really pointed that out to us the other day, that one thing that he's proud of is how he's answered the questions in terms of the durability. We all know what Favre did and not missing any starts and playing hurt. And Aaron Rodgers says he feels real proud of the fact that he's come out with injuries and he's been able to play through them this year. And you can see there his toughness level is sky high, taking that big shot from Pep. Brayton had done a great job chasing him, and Pepper has just never stopped. As he didn't know where he was. He was out of bounds. First and goal at the seven. Here is Brandon Jackson cutting it back. He's down at the one yard line. He's inside the one. John Beeson made the tackle. Sam, it was a good run, but there's always a good block in front of a good run. And watch this guy here as he ends up on Thomas Davis. And watch the junction point right here. Bam! And Kuhn just pushes him right out of there. And Brandon Jackson cuts up inside the safety, Chris Harris. And again, Beeson has to come from the backside to clean it up. And here is second and goal. Three tight ends in, Lee, Humphrey, and Finley. Jackson, he's hit. He was hit short of the line of scrimmage. Bounder may have wound up losing half a yard back to the one yard line. By the way, on that play where Roger, where Rogers was hit out of bounds by by Pepper, that was ruled a sack because he was chased out of bounds by Tyler Brayton. So they got it. A sack. Well, they, they, this is. It's third and goal from the one. Three tight ends in. It's the fullback, Kuhn, and he doesn't get in. Great job up front by the Panthers' defensive line. And I said it a little while ago, Kuhn has been terrific on short yardage. But Charles Johnson, really, Charles Johnson, all the guys, but Charles Johnson is the one that gets the big push on the right tackle and forces Kuhn to run right into the back of him. After sending Aaron Rodgers onto the field, Mike McCarthy brought him off, sends on Mason Crosby with two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter as the Packers look to regain the lead. It's a officially a 19-yard field goal attempt. And it's right through. And the Packers lead 31 to 28. They have dominated time of possession. 37 minutes, 29 seconds to only 20 minutes, 34 seconds for the Carolina Panthers. And it's really been a nice mix for him offensively. Running the football with Brandon Jackson. Good, good blocking up front. Aaron Rodgers having a lot of time to throw the football. And he's been absolutely precise here in the second half. And it's encouraging, too, because didn't know how Aaron Rodgers was going to play in the cold, in the wind, in the snow. All of the above have happened in this football game today in terms of the elements. And Aaron Rodgers has just gotten better throughout the throughout the football game. Second half, the Packers have scored every time they've had the ball. It started with a field goal, then the touchdown, and then the two-point conversion to Greg Jennings, the touchdown pass to Greg Jennings, and the field goal by Mason Crosby. Field goal, two touchdowns, and a field goal. And this last drive was 16 plays. That's their longest drive of the season in terms of plays. 79 yards, 9 minutes, 13 seconds. And they've really just played keep away. I mean, they've almost doubled up Carolina in time of possession in this game. Mark Jones from the goal line. Can he get another big return? He tries to take it outside. He's got a good return. 
Jones still going, and he's out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Another great return for Jones, who had a 50-yarder earlier. He got a 45-yarder right here. Well, this is huge, too. And again, it's the kicker, Mason Crosby, that forces him out of bounds. Being down a field goal with what the clock looks like, under two minutes, to have a return like that, it's a huge shot in the arm. Now it's really a couple of big passes, and they're in field goal range for, for Casey. Jake DeLome has had 15 career game-winning drives in the fourth quarter. 17 total in overtime as well. Starting for the 45, DeLome. Throwing deep for Steve Smith. He made the catch. He made the catch, and he is down at the one-yard line again. That ball was up for grabs. There were two defenders, and Steve Smith took it away from the Packers. Nobody plays the ball better in the air than Steve Smith. Jake Salone just puts this up. Woodson is actually playing upfield shoulder and is in great position to go get the interception. Steve Smith reaches back. I don't know what Charles Woodson, whether he stopped to try to pick it off, but he got into a bad position. Steve Smith able to use his body, shield him, and again, come up with a big catch right down the middle of the field. Packers call timeout. That's a 54-yard pass play. Was there a little push-off by Steve Smith on Charles Woodson well, there? The, the good ones usually have a little subtle push-off, and here's another look at it. And again, I think Charles Woodson, as Jake just throws that ball off his back foot, Charles Woodson's thinking interception, interception, and then he kind of puts on the brakes to get behind Steve Smith and get himself a pick, and Steve Smith uses his body to shield him. And again, when you put it up like that, Steve Smith is going to come down with more of those than he's not. Four catches, 105 yards for Steve Smith. All the second half, his fifth 100-yard game of the season. The previous play is under review. Yeah, they're going to see where he went down, and if he went down from contact from Charles Woodson, therefore the ball would not be as close to the goal line. Okay. And again, within the last two minutes, it's, or if this game should go to overtime, it's all booth review. Now let's see if it's the contact from Woods, Woodson that forces Steve Smith to go down. There's no contact, no contact, no. There's no contact. So the ball, I think, is going to stand right where Brandon Chiller took him down. That's where the ball is going to be placed, right where it was initially, because there is no contact from Woodson, which forces Steve Smith to go to the ground. And the official was on the play, watching it all the way, never ruled it down. Now you have to ask yourself, if the ball does stand here, and I think it will on the half-yard line, if you're Green Bay, do you just let him score? And I guess when only down by three and being a field goal, you got to really try to play your best short yardage defense. We welcome those of you who are watching San Francisco and Buffalo. Congratulations to the 49ers, their fourth win of the season. Sam Rosen, Tim Ryan, Chris Myers here in Green Bay at Lambeau Field in a back and forth game. Carolina led 21 to 10 at halftime. Packers with a big second half took the lead on a field goal just 24 seconds ago, but a 54 yard pass from Jake DeLone to Steve Smith has put the Panthers on the Green Bay one. The play under review from upstairs in the booth to see where, whether Steve Smith might have been down earlier. He got up and ran to the one yard. You know, I, I think it's a moot point whether they call him down or not from the contact from Woodson. The fact is, is he really didn't gain possession until he was already free from Woodson. He's still bobbling, bobbling, bobbling. Now he's got full possession. Again, I think it's going to stand right where it was called, right at the half-yard line is where they're going to keep the placement and the spot of the football. Gene Steratore is our referee. He's in contact with the people upstairs. They have checked it out. Mike McCarthy has had his team come back with a huge second half, two field goals and two touchdowns, led by the passing of Aaron Rodgers. I think only being down by three, you got to do your best to hold him to a field goal. I mean, if it was four, you may let him score so you can get the ball back as quick as possible. After review, the ruling on the field stands 
The receiver after the catch was not down by contact until he was down at the one yard line. Be first down Carolina. So first down inside the one yard line. As the Panthers try to regain the lead, they led by 11 points in the first half twice. And we welcome those of you who just watched the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defeat the New Orleans Saints here in Green Bay. Sam Rosen, Tim Ryan, Chris Myers, Carolina trailing the Packers 31 to 28 after leading 21 to 10 at halftime. But now after a big kickoff return, to Steve Smith, the Panthers trying to take the lead. Panthers have one timeout remaining. Play clock looks like it's been stopped. Here's first and goal. Two tight ends in. D'Angelo Williams, he's in for his fourth touchdown of the game. D'Angelo Williams with a career high four touchdowns has given Carolina the lead. Well, watch what they do to Aaron Campman right here. Watch both tight ends, Rosario and Jeff King, and then Ota gets it started. They take Aaron Campman and put him five yards into the end zone, which creates the huge alleyway for D'Angelo Williams on the touchdown. John Casey for the extra point. And it's a four-point lead for Carolina. And we welcome those of you who are watching the Giants and the Washington Redskins. We welcome you to Lambeau Field. Sam Rosen, Tim Ryan, Chris Myers. This has been a back and forth game. Carolina led 21 to 10 at halftime. Green Bay has dominated the second half. Just under two minutes to go. Green Bay took the lead 31-28. Then Mark Jones returned the kickoff 45 yards. Jake DeLome hit Steve Smith for 54 yards down to the one-yard line. And D'Angelo Williams went in for his fourth touchdown of the game. And Carolina, 8-3 on the season, trying to remain tied with Tampa Bay for first place in the NFC South, has a 35 31 lead numbers in the game Aaron Rodgers 29 for 42 298 yards three touchdown passes 210 of those yards coming in the second half and Greg Jennings with a career high eight receptions snow falling it started here in the fourth quarter Aaron Rodgers will get a chance to bring the Packers back. They have scored every time they've had the ball here in the second half. Now this is Green Bay weather, Tim. Reese Lloyd on the kickoff. Will Blackman one yard deep. Blackman is pulled down. As he got to the 16-yard line, Nick Goings in on the tackle. Second half for Aaron Rodgers has been something special. The play fakes, and he hit Donald Lee for a touchdown pass. They went for two points to tie the game to Greg Jennings. That tied it at 21. Then they took the lead on a touchdown pass to Greg Jennings. And this was when, after being tied, that field goal gave the Packers a three-point lead. But Carolina coming right back. Now leading 35-31. From the 17, Aaron Rodgers, empty backfield. Four wide receivers. Pump fake, puts it up. Too far for Greg Jennings. The wind has become a factor now. It's a swirling wind down on the well, field. Well, it's been a factor the whole second half, and it really hasn't affected Aaron Rodgers and his arm strength. He's got great velocity on the football. I think that one there. He just tried to loft it out there. The receiver was open on the out route. He just put too much air under the football. He's got to put that more on a laser and, and throw it harder because it just ended up sailing on. Crucial game for the Packers who have lost three of their last four. They're at five and six and a game out in the NFC North. Everybody out. Pressure from Julius Peppers. Rodgers puts it up deep for Driver and it is intercepted. John Beeson, the middle linebacker. And a dejected Aaron Rodgers comes off his first interception of the game. Well, 
and this is where he said he gets in trouble at times and I know you got to press here at the end of the game still has two timeouts left in, in this game and he tries to make a play with four defenders around Donald Driver watch him again this has been a huge escape alley for him all day popping out to the right you see Driver coming across the field here he's got defenders all around him I mean, there's there's five defenders really in the vicinity and Aaron Rodgers trying a little too hard to make a play as Beeson comes up with what looks like the game saving interception. Beeson's third interception of the season. Packers still have two timeouts remaining. D'Angelo Williams getting through a hole. AJ Hawk wrapped him up but he picked up eight on the play. Today's game was produced by Mike Burks, directed by Rich Russo, associate director Tom Yowie, broadcast associate Eric Mandia, technical producer is Frank Phillips, our technical director is the governor, John Howard. Pre-game show produced by Scott Ackerson, directed by Bob Levy, senior producer Bill Brown, executive producers of Fox Sports, Red Gorin and David Hill, spotter in the booth, Gary Lynn. Our statistician in the booth, Evan McGuire. Computer stats, Mark Sazda, Ty Yoey on the Fox box. And don't forget, coming up on the AT&T postgame show, exclusive BCS standings. The word is a big shakeup in those standings. And next week, the BCS Bowl Selection Show in prime time right here on Fox. Will the Trojans be part of that shakeup, Sam? I think so. Why not? D'Angelo Williams thrown back, and the Packers use their final timeout. Green Bay, if they don't come up with a miracle here, will go to five and seven. Tonight, Minnesota playing Chicago. The winner of that game will be seven and five. The Packers will be down two games with four games remaining. Carolina will remain tied with Tampa Bay at nine and three for first place in the NFC South with four games remaining. Though Tampa Bay has the tiebreaker right now. Jake DeLome and Steve Smith. Steve Smith with four catches in the game. He didn't have a catch in the first yards. half of the no. football game. They, they not have a they, catch. They totally shut him down. A couple of sacks in the game for Carolina. Julius Peppers involved. Oh, he also had a big hit on Rodgers for a penalty. Williams brought down short of the first down line. This will be a big one. Jake DeLome put it up, but Steve Smith made the play here against Charles Woodson. Yeah, I don't know if Charles just mistimed his jump or tried to get behind Steve Smith, thinking the ball was going to trail a little bit back behind Steve, but Steve just goes up and gets it, what he's done so many times in his career. I mean, the guy came in as a punt returner and became one of the better receivers in pro football throughout his career and just plays so much bigger. He's 5'9", 185 pounds, and he doesn't play that way. He, he's almost got the body of a or the the play of a, a big receiver in terms of how he uses his body in the air to shield off defenders and really go capture the football. Panthers let the clock run down call a timeout with 13 seconds remaining and send on their punting unit. Don't forget next week here on Fox. It's a big doubleheader Sunday and it all begins with a Bill Ford tough. Fox NFL Sunday pregame show Vikings and Lions Tim and I and Chris Myers will be there late games Dallas and Pittsburgh that'll be something special Rams and Cardinals noon Eastern 9 Pacific right here on Fox now remember every, Carolina has had three punts blocked this year and They're everybody up after Packers have 11 men on the line they're going after Jason Baker and he gets it away it stays in bounds. It rolls and rolls. The clock ticks off. Don't touch it. And the clock is stopped with two seconds. So one play left. And for the Carolina Panthers, this will be a great road win for them. With the snow coming down and the wind picking up. The Panthers, despite the fact that 
Green Bay, Green Bay played so well in the second half, came up with a couple of big plays, had two great returns, kickoff returns by Mark Jones. The, you know, that's the crusher right there, and, and especially the one late as Green Bay took the lead, and then, of course, the big pass that we've showed to Steve Smith was the difference maker here in the second half. Here's the last play of the game, provided there is no penalty. Rodgers throws, Jennings drops it, and that's it. The Carolina Panthers have defeated the Green Bay Packers 35 to 31. Fourth loss this season for the Packers by four points or fewer. The Carolina Panthers now nine and three, Packers five and seven. We'll be right back.